The preview you are about to watch is for a movie that is unlike any you have ever seen before. It is for a movie that goes beyond temporary fear to everlasting terror. It is a movie called Demons. Yes, the demons are coming, and they're coming for you. Warning, if you have the courage to see demons, sit near an exit. Otherwise, you might never get out. In your theater, who will survive the touch of the demons, and who will not? Demons. With music by Billy Idol, Motley Crue, The Adventures, Rick Springfield, and Saxon. This is no dream. This is happening right now. And it could be happening to you. Demons. They will make cemeteries their cathedrals. And the cities will be your tomb. Will you survive it? Demons. I am from beyond. Listen, and all you desire will be yours. Welcome to Spider-Man and the Secret Wars. Prepare for battle. Aside in the Clone Wars. Welcome to Prattle World. I am your host, the ever amazing, ever spectacular Spider Dan. And in this podcast, I spotlight entertainment's best kept secrets that a mainstream audience may find boring. And welcome to another Clone Wars, where two similar pieces of media clash to be crowned champion. Two go in, and only one comes out. And today, we are back. Me and the demonic, depraved one known as Dennis. Well, hello. Hello. Uh, (laughs) You are demonic. You are depraved. I am. All of them. You are divisive, to say the least, as a a human being. (laughs) Why, thank you. It's the nicest thing you've ever said to me. (laughs) We are here to compare... Two, again, talking Italian horror, which is something we come back to a lot. We're going to compare Demons, or Demone, and Demons 2. Two very similar films, <laughs> uh, to say the least. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I mean, the direct sequels to each other. And, yes. Well, one is a direct sequel to the, the original. Um, and there are quite a few similarities that I'm sure we'll get into. Um, but we have just come back from seeing... It was a lovely double bill, uh, 4K restoration from Arrow Video, and it was shown at the uh, Chapel Town Picture House in Manchester. Uh, and we've just come back from there, and the date is the 21st of May. It was fun, a lot of fun. It was lovely. It was a it was great, good. great yeah. little venue. I'd never been before, so uh, it's kind of it's it's like a multi kind of art center type yeah. thing. It's got a bar, uh, multi space, multimedia the, the, functionality. They bring drinks to you. Yeah, they brought drinks they to us. A table and stuff. Um, they're very very friendly. Yeah. Uh, well, they do re- request you to come in half an hour early if possible. We were stuck in traffic for over an hour. <laughs> Uh, and we set off an hour before. <laughs> so, uh, But luckily, it didn't start for another no. half an hour probably, at least. Yeah, half, six, uh, but they've been showing all sorts of like cult movies, not necessarily cult movies, some no. like quality movies like Lord of the Rings they're showing, uh, Overlord. They're doing a kaiju day um, that's coming up very shortly. But when I release this, it'll already have gone. It'll, yeah, have, but it'll they, have finished. It looks like every month they have... Yeah, a collection of sort of movies they're showing. Yeah, they keep, they're buying all these 4K. Yeah, yeah. Um, I can see it on their uh, on their Facebook, on their Instagram. They're buying 4K versions of everything. They bought like 300 and Blade, loads of stuff coming up. So, um, so if you're if you don't want to venture out to a cinema that might be a bit too expensive, um, and you know see something you may not like potentially, if you want to go there, it is cheap. I think it was for two tickets, it was like 17 quid, right. which is 
less than like a single ticket to a new film, I think. Um, like I the know, it's been so long since I've Yeah, I know. Well, they're, they're expensive. Well, that's, they're expensive. That, also, I quite like the fact that it was it's my first, you know, after lockdown. Yeah, first time to get to a, to yeah. a cinema with my mate yeah. watching Demons. two amazingly bad, brilliant masterpieces. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get into that. Um, I, I I found it. I think it was a really good film to show yeah. in a cinema because the whole first film mm. takes place within a cinema, and the film is, you know, haunted or you know, reasons for the for the film to even be and the demons arose from the film um but yeah i I thought it gave it an added kind of atmosphere that what watching it at home wouldn't really be the same the fact that you know the chairs we were sat on was red it was red Mm. around us yeah the movie theater in the movie was red yeah and that's similar sort of the the decor was very very similar it's not exactly the same but it was it was close enough where i was like are they gonna have like an actor run out and attack us like or you know bash through the screen or something Uh, they didn't but you know, I I probably if it was me running the show, I'd probably just for just for shits and giggles, just have someone run out and go. And you wouldn't need a mask. No, absolutely not me. No, I've got no. massive pimples You'd all be over. Absolutely fine. I've got my pimples are always bursting. Your teeth are everywhere. You'd oh yeah, falling out, brilliant. pushing themselves out, yeah. um, falling out of my face. Yeah, I'm a hideous, hideous beast, um, climbing out of people's backs and everything. I wouldn't call you hideous. All oh, right, I'm a little maybe maybe a beast. I'm a, I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a <laughs> I'm my own harshest critic. Oh, yeah, no, you know. So, before we get into both films, uh, I'm going to bring up our reasons for comparison. Yes. So, the reasons we are comparing the two films. So, number one, both part of the same franchise, obviously. Number two... Uh, two cast members reappear in but in the second film that were in the first. Um, they are both directed by Lamberto Bava, who is the son of uh, Mario Bava, who we looked at when we looked at the slasher films, and he directed Bay of Blood. And I think Lamberto probably helped out on that yeah, film. Yeah, it was second unit. Second unit, there you go. Um, both were written... <laughs> we're gonna, no. uh, yeah, okay. R- r- we're going to get into this, but written is probably with a strong wax, word. With, with wax crayon. Yeah. Written and produced by Dario Argento. And you can see his, definitely see his fingerprints all over this film and the following one. Not so much, but there's definitely an influence there. Um, both male leads, both male characters who are the leads in the films, are called George. And then the makeup and the special effects team was pretty much the same on both yeah. as well. So uh, I'm sure there's more reasons as well and more reasons I, I, for... I do like the leads both having such an Italian name like... Yeah, George. 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 Yeah. George, George, George of the demons. Watch out for those teeth. <laughs> Watch out for those inaccuracies. <laughs> There are a few. It's a fair few. Um, but yeah, definitely, um, Before again, before we get into it, definitely check out Chapel Town Picture House. They're on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Um, really cool. Got some good stuff coming up. I'm sure they've got other things coming up, like poetry and what yeah. have you. I'm sure we could look into that. But let's get started. Uh, Dennis, you introduced me, in fact, to the world of demons. I, so why, yes. don't, why don't you try and explain... What the f- like? Try your best to describe the plot, or or the the concept of demons. The, the very first film concept is I don't know where to begin. Basically, <laughs> um, the demons um, <sighs> they they infect other people by the, well well first of all there's demons yeah um, and and the um they 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 kind of. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the first movie, the kind of plot, um, people get lured to a cinema, um, they watch a movie about demons, mm-hmm. but there are similarities between the movie and what's happened in real life. Mm-hmm. Um, the two um, the similarities kind of happen at the same time as they're happening on the screen. Mm-hmm. A demon appears on screen and appears in the theatre mm-hmm. because of this similarity with a the, with the mask. Um, and then basically from there... The demons uh, run around um, scratching and tearing and and, and screaming and killing, yeah, yeah. Um, and did they, they say one of the rules? <laughs> rules, <laughs> very loose. Is loose that rules. they they pass the demon stuff by by 
by scratching. <laughs> Yeah, apparently so. Yeah. It, it's kind of, it's basically like a zombie movie. Like the logic yeah. is kind of there like cuz it, it they get infected, yeah. they get scratched, they get cut, they have a, you know, um the first girl tries this mask on and gets scratched by this demonic mask and then st- grows this big zit, big spot and it the pops. Best pimple pop I've seen in years. <laughs> very satisfying, very oh, it was satisfying. Good. It was good, yeah. uh, and then she becomes a demon and then goes on yeah. to infect other people. Yeah. Um, and it's a similar thing in the sequel as well. But yeah, it's basically that kind of premise. They're all trapped within the cinema yeah. and they're trying to survive the the night uh, from these from these demons. They don't have any other kind of special powers. They don't like throw magic bolts or summon the dead or float or anything. They're good on trampolines. Yeah. <laughs> they are good on trampolines. They do have some jumping ability. Um, but generally, they're pretty much just like, yeah. you know, I'm just going to grab you. Yeah. It, it's, I think you said it's a little bit like Evil Dead. There's yes. A, there's, in the in the, cine, in the the film that they're watching, they, they discover the tomb of Nostradamus, who was like, he predicted loads of things that came true, like the planets, discovering the planets, and then the rise of demons. They're like, the rise of demons? That's not happened yet. Not yet. Do-do-do. Uh, they find the the, <laughs> the, the book. <laughs> he reads the book, and Notre Dame is this guy who's particular so much. He goes, "Demons are an implement, an implement of evil." Fuck, you nailed it, Cheers, there, Notre Dame. Oh. We would never have, you know. You, you are clever, sir. He is you absolutely. Are, oh. It's it's hitting the nail on the head. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Jesus. Um, I I just before we carry on, I love this movie. So much. It is absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> and I don't really know why. Yeah, it's it's totally mental. If you're looking for logic, plot, characterization, story structure, <laughs> if you're looking for a film that makes sense, just maybe just pass on demons. But if you're looking for a, a madcap kind of horror movie which kind of grabs your attention, it looks great, gorgeous and cinematography. Moves at, a pace. moves at a pace. It doesn't let up from the from the get go, especially this first one. It yeah. just keeps your attention. It, you know, there's a there's a couple of random kind of segues and interludes. Well, it is Italian. Yeah. And again, most Italian films don't uh, really have a lot of plot no, or logic, no. but at least they look nice. They look good. Good. Special effects are good. Yeah. So, yeah, and I, I can see why you like this. And it definitely shits all over uh, Night of the Demons. Yeah. Uh, which is a kind of similar premise. Um, they even but, tried copying the demon, didn't they? Like, yeah, a little bit. And it's kind of a similar idea. It's like a Halloween night. It's like an American one, but it's just not not as good. Nowhere near as good. It's no. very cheesy and crap. This is the one you want to watch. Is there any demon demons movies you want to watch that this is the one to watch yeah. for, for my money anyway I I, like I, said, I love it I've watched it zillions of times but it's the first time I've seen it on the big screen it's the first time I've seen it in the it was, it was definitely very special yeah. it was a, a one off experience when I saw when I saw it was advertised I was like I'm going to get us tickets because yeah. that's something we'll both enjoy um, and it, it does add to it being in a cinema watching the cinema it still doesn't add the cracks <laughs> <laughs> I think um, they're a bit they're a bit more exposed probably. Yeah, yeah. Um and I think as I'm getting older and I watch I watch it at least once a once a year, mm. those cracks are getting bigger. <laughs> um but I, I, I just adore it. I, I like I like the cinematography on it, I like the direction on it. Mm. I think the demons are great. Mm. The borderline comedic at times. Oh yeah. Um but also a lot of horror villains are though, yeah, I think. But also terrifying in the same same vein. Vein, lots of veins. Oh, a lot of veins. Yeah, a lot of exposed um, veins. And it's just, it, I, I, I do adore it. And it's really strange because I've not seen the second one. I watched the second one with you, mm. and I've watched it on again today. And I'm thinking, yeah, why did I, why did I think this was better? <laughs> I, don't, I don't really know the logic for this that. This is another curse of the werewolf. For yeah, me. <laughs> yeah. But no, it's, 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 it's. We came out in 1985. Mm-hmm. I probably saw it. I was a bit young. Were you? Yeah, I saw it on a... Um, Underage. Saw it on my brother, Double ba- Bill. Barely legal Dennis. <laughs> That's my um, OnlyFans. Um, if you, <laughs> you want to um, we'll go on. Subscriptions are 50p a month. Um, and, you you know, 7 and you get to see anything. Um, and I watched it on a Double Bill with Evil Dead. Nice. So my, my, my brother used to love torturing me hmm. um, and watching Evil Dead and Demons in uh, one afternoon. Did 
shit me up. Yeah. You know? Um, and I can see the comparison. It is referred yeah. to as, as the Italian Evil Dead. Yeah, I can definitely see that because, like, I mean, a lot of people, like Andy, Andy's a big fan of Evil Dead and he will argue... Uh, you know, people are like, oh yeah, Evil Dead, it's a zombie movie because it's called Evil Dead. But actually they're possessed by demons. They're possessed, they become deadites. Yes. So they're not, it's not a zombie because that, that gives them kind of certain abilities and things that zombies would never do or could do. Um, and he's, he's right. He's totally right. So yeah, I can see why the comparisons are made and there's probably a lot of influence and you see a lot of the other influences on the second one as well mm-hmm. um, from different kind of horror movies as well. But yeah, I I totally agree. I think it is the kind of Italian Evil Dead. Yeah. Um. If you if a, if you were to compare it to to anything, and I also think it's up there as being one of the better Italian horror movies. It follows it follows kind of slasher tropes as well, which Italian movies are very famous mm. for as well. Yeah. But I do think it is up there with with some of the better ones, and I think it's it kind of you know Argento as well at uh, the height of his powers. Mm. Um, and he was kind of like a perfect storm. All the people coming together, the people they've worked a second unit, people who've who's, you know been apprentices with them. Yeah, exactly. Like they all yeah. kind of came together on, on this one movie. The director says is um, first demons movie is his best movie he's ever made. Mm. And I've seen a few others, and I will agree. <laughs> but the bar is in the eye. <laughs> no, probably not. Um, but no, it, uh, the, the the premise is just ludicrous, really. But I I just think it's watching watching a film and then having similarities between what's happening in real life and watching the film. Mm. And as a viewer, we know that. Mm. We can we can see it. Yeah, yeah. but you can see people trying to piece it together. Mm. I think that's really clever. I think it's really good. I think it's done well. And then obviously we've talked about she scratched her face. Yeah. The big thing bursts. Yeah. And um, oh, she's a, she's a prostitute too. Of course, yes. Yeah, yeah we Standard. forgot the prostitute. Because, bit. I mean, you know, the the big black pimp just is is something out of another film. He's probably the most memorable character. Yeah. He comes to the cinema, he's had this free ticket. This, so Mikhail Suave, who's a direct who become became a director not long after this, who did The Church, which was one of the unofficial Demons Three. Um I'm getting to that later with all the different sequel names. You gotta love Italians for trying to sell flogging a fucking dead horse. Yeah. You gotta love him for it. Um but um but he's like he it's something out of like Superfly or Shaft. And he's and he it sounds like he's voiced like on the dub it sounds like he's voiced by a, a white guy playing a black pimp. Yes. Which which is just like it kind of is like obviously shouldn't happen, wouldn't happen nowadays, but what what's weird with the dubbing, the dubbing when they dub it in English works better mm. than when they're overdubbing with the Italian. Yeah. It is bizarre. It yeah. It's really weird. I, I, this was because we, when we saw it tonight, they did the, they didn't do the, they did, they did subtitles. The uncut, they did yeah. The uncut, Italian Un- uncut subtitled version. So, so that's why it's in Italian. But yeah, I've, I've seen the previous, the previous ones were dubbed over. And I, again, I've got no issue between dubs or subs. I know a lot of people like argue over which one's better, which one's the more correct viewing experience. But I'm like, if, if I turn it on and it's dubs or su- subs, I tend to stick with it. You don't go, Oh, I don't go. Oh God! Oh, okay. oh no, I'm gonna have to read. Or oh no, I want to read. You know, I, I'd never. I'm never bothered. I'm just like it's on now. Yeah. Well, I feel it. the same when I watch animated animals. Yeah. <laughs> if they start I tell talking, you what, I turn it off. I tell you what, I did used to change. Um, I, I, well, I still have them, but the Dragon Ball Z D, uh, DVDs I had, you could pick the American music or the or the Japanese music. So I, uh, I'd usually tend to just leave the dub alone because it was just the dub was there. But I tend to turn on the American music because it was all a bit more like yeah. hard rock and it's like, yeah, get you more pumped up. And the Japanese music was always like, and uh, it wasn't always the, it didn't have the same feel I literally have no idea what you're talking about it's fine moving so on back it, to demons I think that passed me by back to um, demons so so we've got this this, these, this group of people uh, oh we've missed out the grumpy bastard <laughs> It was, it well, was, we missed out a lot. We, yeah, but the grumpy bastard, shut up! <laughs> so you got a, a he talks to his wife like shit. <laughs> so this guy's got it's it's his anniversary with his wife. <laughs> He's been given a free ticket to this film. He doesn't know what it's about, and. His wife's moaning and complaining and stuff. And he's like, you should be happy I'm taking you anywhere. 
<laughs> you know, I've never seen this building before. Well, you don't see anything, you do you? <laughs> well, there's, there's a bit when, when they're watching the film and she goes, oh, it's it's all, it's all too bloody for me. And he just turns and goes, shut up. <laughs> I was all watching it. It's like, what's wrong with you? Anyway, so I think, I think, I think, I think let's, let's just go through the cast of characters. <laughs> I just love that. First, first of all, you've got Mikel Suave, who plays this metal-faced guy, kind of, not ticket tout, but he's kind of giving out the free yeah, tickets. Yeah. Um, he's got half a face that's metal, and, and it looks a bit like the mask, the yes. de- the full demon mask. It's got the same kind of eye. Yeah. Um, now, it's 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 not really clear whether, I think, because the way the, fi- the, the film, not the film within a film they're watching in the cinema, has Mikel Suave in there in a, playing another role, or is it the same role? That's my question because I I think um, he I mean he turns up at the end as well uh, in in the real world. Yes. Um, but within the film, within a film, he gets excuse me, he gets infected by the demon. He becomes a demon, and I'm wondering if that was all filmed and that's already been in the past, and then that's his same character at the end. Because again, none of this is explained. There I- is no expo- There's no exposition that explains why or what is happening really in the whole thing like you don't get that if you're looking for that you're never going to get it a lot of the scenes don't make sense a lot of the decisions the guarantees make don't make sense like they barricade a whole door they forget to barricade another then they just start undoing the barricade they've made you know it's it's bizarre some of the decisions just like oh and again i get characters panic i get they make stupid decisions and that probably would happen in real life as well but yeah sometimes it's just like for god's sake what are you doing and then we've got george and ken very italian names these george yeah (laughs) and then we've got cheryl is it yeah cheryl and kathy 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 Kathy, as he keeps calling her kathy Catty, who I'm a little bit crushed on. She's yeah. gorgeous. I mean, there's a lot of lot of uh, be- yeah, beautiful yeah. people in this uh, in this old film. Then we've got a blind man and Liz. Oh yeah, Liz. <laughs> so you've got this Liz. Bl- this blind dad comes to a horror movie of all things. You no, know, I didn't know. First time I didn't know it was a dad. I thought he was just very lucky. <laughs> But carry on. <laughs> and then she, she's describing the film for him, what's going on and stuff. Uh, and then all of a sudden, he's like, where are you, Liz? Where are you? And she's just getting off with this guy that's obviously, she obviously knows and is invited. And then she disappears with him to the back. And, and he's like, where are you, Liz? Where are you? He starts panicking over like, and again, it's not even the, nothing horrific's happened. He's just still watching this film. And he's like, Liz, Liz. Liz. Uh, and then he gets his eyes fucking pulled out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's Italian movies. Eyes do feature a lot in Italian films. They do, yeah. Very usually a lot popping, of focus. Or pulling off, or Pull, yeah, or stabbing, in them. yeah, yeah, pulling out. Yeah. So we got Liz. Is, uh, is that the? That's no other really kind of other like main characters. Main characters. I mean, you got there's a young couple who are getting off. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Oh, and the um, and the, the elf. Yes. Yeah. The the lady who runs the cinema. Who yeah. who you think initially is a kind of in on the thing, yeah. but actually is just. Is just is in danger. And during the movie, he's just randomly walking around, shining torches in people's faces, <laughs> yeah. which is not putting at all when you're trying no, to watch a film. Of course not. But everyone seems very again, hot blooded Italians. Everyone seems to be like banging or getting off with yeah, each other, yeah. or you know, uh, in the cinema. <laughs> I only remember Hannah. I don't remember his name. Uh, yeah, I can't remember his name. I don't even give him a name. No, oh, the young man, floppy um, hair, jump around but, his neck. <laughs> Yeah, the we forgot to mention the most integral characters in this film as well. Uh, the punks that we constantly cut away from. The punks. So, so we've got all, Ripper. The, all the main characters are stuck in the cinema, but every so often we'll cut away to this car that's playing a lot of kind of... There's a lot of... You know what? It's got a pretty good soundtrack. soundtrack. Soundtrack's brilliant. Pretty good soundtrack. In that car, though, it is the most screwed up mixtape I think I've ever heard. <laughs> you don't go from Go West... <laughs> To Saxon, it just doesn't happen. <laughs> so you've got you've got Billy Idol, uh, except Motley Crue, uh, Rick Springfield, Pretty Maids, Go West, The Adventures, and Saxon. Yeah, <laughs> what a weird. But the, also, to, to be honest, it's about as eclectic as my iTunes is. Yeah, yeah, but these are hardened punks. Mm. Punks. It, I, listen, I don't know many punks. No. It's before my time, but I don't think they listen to Go West. <laughs> I'll be honest. I don't think it's on top of their list. <laughs> I'm a bit I'm a bit partial to Go West. I'm a bit partial. 
I'm not surprised. <laughs> yeah. um, but the, talking about the music, the soundtrack is awesome. Yeah, Sound, really good. Massive bass, lots of synth. So you've got, you've got um, Claudio Simonetti, who is in the band Goblin, um, but he was riding solo on this film, um, and he does most of the music throughout the film, and it really does work. Yeah, and you, like, can, you can hear Goblin. You yeah, can, you can hear you it. You have this, like, the, the demons almost have their own, you're like, do, do, do. Mm. And whenever you hear that tune, you know, the, the, it's like almost like the Jaws one, do. Mm. Yeah. Do do. Dun, dun. It's brilliant. It's really yeah. cool. Yeah, so, really good. So those are the characters. <laughs> so the pimp has two ladies, Rosemary. Mm. And the other one. And the other one. <laughs> so Rosemary's cut her face. Mm. She, she's gone to the toilet watching the film because it's a bit itchy, still bleeding. Yeah. It gets really big, pops. She panics. Goes, ah! And then the pimp goes, where the fuck's Rosemary? <laughs> she's been gone ages. She's been gone about two minutes yeah if she's going for a shit she's gonna be longer than that she's gone to the toilet leave the woman alone mm. she sends the other um lady of the night lady of the night and as she gets up the grumpy guy says hookers everywhere <laughs> <laughs> for like no reason <laughs> so she goes in and is like you know rosemary are you okay are you all right is everything fine that's my um, prostitute voice is that all right co- yeah that's good. Okay. that's good that's um, good um and she sees the sink, which has kind of got, got this kind of gooey... Mm, substance. Pussy, bloody... Mm. Another another thing like Evil Dead is the use of of not the colour red in all the kind of the yeah. bodily fluids. Yeah. It's a lot of green and, yeah. and light blue. I think it, I think it's a lot of it's toothpaste. Yeah, probably. It looks like toothpaste. Yeah, it could be. Um, so she's like, oh, are yeah, you okay? And she opens one of the stalls and... Rosemary's shaking in mm. the corner. And you know she's changing into a demon because her hair's fucked up. <laughs> that is it. Forget about everything else with a demon. Forget about the teeth and the claws. For some bizarre reason, when they turn into a demon, their hair goes greasy and massive. Yeah. But anyway. Because before then she had like the, was it like jerry curls? Yeah, yeah like, like dready type, type yeah. things. So um, like crimped or whatever. So she turns around, girl goes, ah! And she scratches her neck. So the girl runs away. Rosemary goes the opposite way. I have no idea why she doesn't follow her. Because <laughs> she needs to go. Maybe she's like, gallery. well, maybe she's like, well, she's infected. I need to infect one yeah, person. Yeah, maybe, yeah. I, I'm, I don't know why I'm trying to apply logic to No, it's to good. I, film, I, no, I, I like but... it. All this is taking place with beautifully shot room. Hmm. Um, the toilet is red. The toilet walls are red. Hmm. When she's running um, away from her, there's curtains blowing away and stuff. And... Hmm. It's really nice, but one of the one of the bits, one of my favorite bits, she goes behind the, the screen, and on the screen itself, there's lots of screaming, and there's um obviously a demon with a knife, yeah. which is weird because none of the other demons use a knife. Yeah, that that's what was weird to me as well, and you don't see him. No, you don't see his face until like the last minute. Yeah, and also, if you're going grave robbing, why do you bring a kitchen, a big butcher's knife out with you? Anyway, so, <laughs> but it's very, you know, it's a scene that's I think has been copied loads and, yeah. you know, maybe even before Demon. Mm. Um, so she's screaming behind the screen in the in the um, theatre that there's a few people picking up on the fact that those screams sound quite re- real. Mm. But the, what's really, what I, what I really like about it from a cinema point of view is the, on the on the movie, the knife cuts down the center, mm. and just as it does that, she falls through. So it's almost like it's been opened yeah. for her, which is really really Time, cool. Timed, perfect. Yeah, really good. While this is happening, Rosemary is killing Liz and her boyfriend, <laughs> and she what? strangles that, them. That's she gets she gets the velvet rope, doesn't yeah. she? And just strangles. They have these massive teeth and claws, and she strangles them. Yeah, I just don't get it. So, and with the, I, I quite like that it's the velvet rope because obviously that's like the, oh, you can't go behind here because it's got a velvet rope yeah, yeah, Ooh, yeah. blocked. And then all of a sudden, the, the pimp is very concerned about his his woman. Yep. To the to the point he goes, "This is a very good friend of mine." I don't know how pimps work. Maybe they are. I don't know. Who knows? I, I'm not Who a knows? pimp. I'm over. I mean, he's taking he's taking them to the cinema. So he yeah, must, that's nice. Isn't he it? must like. He must like. Yeah. Them. Yeah. I never thought of it that way before. Yeah. I mean, buying I mean, popcorn, though, did they? Well, he didn't buy the bloody tickets. Either. <laughs> Cheap ass. Um, and what kind of comes from that now is I like the transformation. Hmm. So they it's the only they only do it once hmm. in both movies, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's great effect. Though. Yeah, it's, it's and they use the kind of bubble effect on the on. 
Yeah, the kind of those bladder, like, yeah, kind the of bladder like, stuff, the bladder and, effects. But yeah. it's, it's what I like about, it, and I don't know why I'm doing this because you can't see me, but yeah. the claws, the nails come out from yeah. the claws and it split it, splits the human yeah. nail, and, and then the cl- the pointed claw comes yeah, out. Her eyes are red, and then she opens her mouth, and her teeth are being pushed out with the new demon mm. teeth and stuff. Yeah. And as that's happening, Liz's boyfriend's dropped from the ban- from the banister, hung. Yeah. <laughs> um. Which again, it's a different way for a demon to kill somebody. They have claws, hmm. um, and then that kind of what pursues. What but like you of, say, that's kind of like that's like a Jason type thing, yeah. isn't it? That he's he's killing them in a variety of different yes. ways, even though he should just you know knock their heads off, punch it, put his fist right through them or something. And then kind of from that, all hell, hell, demons, uh, hell. Uh, eh? See, I see. Um, kind see of breaks out, and everyone goes running, screaming, and there's something the apart from the miserable bastard, who gets his throat literally ripped out. <laughs> yeah. And it's such a good scene. Oh, so, so good. It's, and it's one of your... Oh. Yeah. And nasty. it's it, typical Italian, close up on it, mm. fingers moving in the skin. Oh, yeah, it's in the flaps you, you and see everything. It tearing, yeah. it's Pull, it's, pulling it. It's, yeah, yeah. I think she's behind it, pulling yeah, it. Yeah, like, pull it, yeah. It's, 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 it's like really stringy. Nice, really yeah. good. Oh, so, um, so good. And then, then, then the film carries on. I will go into more detail about it, but fascinating fact for you. Go on. They wanted to film it in the same cinema as American Wolf in London. Did they? Yeah. And they wanted to set it in in London. Then they got London prices for filming. I thought, <laughs> we'll go to Berlin. Forget that. <laughs> We're off there. Fuck that. And the mask is based on the Italian mask used in Black Sunday. Ah, uh, okay. And the director wants to use the same mask because obviously his dad, his dad yeah. directed that, yeah. But he was told, no, you're not doing it. It's like, so then they designed this whole new one. Naughty. Yeah. I, I think the mask is quite iconic. I think that was good. Yeah, it yeah. kind of reminds me of kind of like those Japanese kind of oni kind yes. of demon, yeah, demon masks. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, conjures that to mind. Um, I think, yeah, I, I think it, I like the stain, stainless kind of steel look. Yeah, yeah. Um, Again, not sure why that's hanging in a, a cinema with, with a, a motorbike, with a motorbike samurai. samurai kendo thing going on. But how good are the posters in the cinema? Yeah, and the classic kind of film posters yeah, yeah. like Dario. I think there's a Argento one. Yeah, there's, there's a Werner, Werner Herzog yeah, one. Creep shows um, up there. And yeah, stuff. some other stuff. So anyway, so so they run out of the auditorium. They run. They're, they're trying to get out. They're yeah. ripping out the doors, and they've been trapped because it's been bricked up. Again, a bit like Evil Dead, like because the 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 bridge gets pulled yeah. out and it's completely it's like two clawed hands, isn't it? Um, but I know bricklayers, yeah, and there's no way they'd get that bricked up in the amount of time they watch that film. I think it's about fifteen minutes. The, you know, it's ten minutes to have a cup of coffee, yeah, bacon butter, mm-hmm. stand the rub your chin. Oh, it's a big job, this Derek, yeah. isn't it? Oh, it's huge. Sexu- then, sexually harass some women as well. Sexually harass yeah. a couple of women, mm-hmm. couple of, and then. They will put a few bricks down and then it's a tea break. Someone go get some toast, scratching their asses. There's absolutely no way. If you, you compare that to the smart motor on the M62, what went like two years over, there was no way that would happen. And if they did manage to get it done, the concrete would be that crap you could just push it over. <laughs> Anyway, I digress. Are you sure? Are you sure they're at the right end of the building? Maybe they got all turned around and went to the wrong one. No, because they ran out of the thing, didn't they? they yeah, ran true. Past the bike. yeah, that's true. Yeah. Again, trying to apply logic to a logicless film. Did, how did? How do you organise something like that? Um, magic. How, how demonic magic? Did you, did you just put an ad in the paper. Need cinema breaking up. Fifteen minutes time scale. Thousand euros. Do that. Uh, I, honestly, I think if you put enough money in somebody's hand, they'd find a way to do it. Mm, we don't country. know how long that movie was going on for as well we can't well it wasn't long was it because it's in real time when we're watching it so it's only it's mm. probably about 15 minutes yeah could be so 10 minutes but then but then the... like who's to say on the outside world maybe time has become different moves at a different pace I maybe also, this is hell I'm also time, wondering why time the fuck I'm justifying a wall being built when uh, demons running around yep. that's the least of people's worries yeah and again, the the film doesn't care about it. No. You don't care about it. You're carried along by the action. Yeah. So, yeah. So, basically, they start... <laughs> and the best freak out ever. The best freak out. Very... <laughs> pa- again, Italian... I'm, I'm a little bit Italian. You know, Italian people talk with their hands a lot, which they do. And then when they panic, they do a lot more talking with their hands. 
<laughs> very aggressively. And I inappropriately got the giggles. Yeah. <laughs> I'm but laughing. It's very like, their reactions are very kind of melodramatic. Yeah, like, yeah. again, if you're looking for Oscar winning acting, this is not it's the film. It's almost like acting what you get for in a silent movie. Yeah. It's so over the top. Oh, it's so, um, so. But at this point in the movie, because because it's so complicated. But I think I think the acting does kind of go along with the style of movie it is. Because oh, yeah, yeah. there is a theatricality and there is. Yes. There is a kind of um, this other world that feels like something other. Yeah. Um, and I think it does kind of match the situation because that, that heightened reality mm. of the demons being real, it kind of, you know, and that's, and they're kind of, ah. It's the faces they pull out. Yeah. Ah, ah. I'll distort yeah. it. But I was, I was going to say then, there was, because the, comp- the film has been that complicated. The pimp now recaps the entire first half of the movie for us. Just in case we didn't quite grasp what yeah. was going on. She put the mask on. Yeah, she got she scratched. The, she did this. It did this. She came, yeah. through the, came through the movie screen. Yeah. It? it was like... And then she was infected by the demon. And now that she's become... Um, they make the assessment that it must be the movie as well. Yeah, I think at that it's... Point. Uh, is it... Kathy, yeah. Kathy's, Kathy. She's like... She, lovely, lovely Kathy. That happened in the movie, and it happened to her, and that's happening here, and it happened on the movie. Um, and they're like, right, let's get up to the projection. They get up to the projection booth, kick it. They're like, they're like hey, I'll, let me break it down. He's like, oh, or like, let me get a key. Or How weak is George? Yeah, he was just like, <laughs> ugh. Oh, it's, it's not working. And then the, this, this, there is like, there's a lot in the in these two movies where it's like, let's do this. And they went, nah, don't bother. It's like, <laughs> you know what I mean? It was just like, all of a sudden, it was just, like, I think they were like, like, let me get a battering ram or let me get a key to open this door. And he's like, nah, don't bother. He just kicks it down. I'm just like, why did you have that conversation then? Just do or it. Well, the, there's, there's a moment where this, this old lady, like everyone's running away from the demons. They're all over the show. And they're like, ah. And this woman just stops for some reason in next to, to this empty room. Uh, this kind of like storeroom goes in slowly turns on the light looks in a mirror and then she gets killed and i was like why the fuck during all that would you just all of a sudden go you know what I just need to slowly walk in here because uh, even, even the demon runs up turns to a right and is like are you fucking what are you fucking doing i'm gonna kill you now this is the worst place you could hide yeah you've what, literally what, what like it, the demon the demon doesn't believe she's that fucking stupid this is not and the it, antiques road trip what are you doing <laughs> It's just like it's the way it's the way she goes in and it's like, oh he's that I'll just put a light on. Very dainty. <laughs> yeah. She like creep, almost creeps in like stealthily, daintily puts on this little halogen light bulb, the little pull this pull cord, and then it's like I'm just gonna look at this mirror. How strange! And then gets fucking obliterated by the demon. Hey, it's, she gets her oh scalps. scalps. Yeah, she gets scalped. Yeah, she, she gets yeah. scalped. Yeah, well, well deserved scalping. I yeah. say. Yeah. So they're they're up in the um projection room mm. and they finally got in and the real realization of it's all automated mm. there's nobody in there <gasps> so, oh no, oh no. I, I love that they make that big revelation like <laughs> it's an automated projector oh it, it's not like it's a haunted fucking projector it's just a, it's just regular yeah, it's just, set up. Yeah, it's just yeah. technology yeah and they have they have this big they have this big zoom in on the film going around and then they go to the pin and he goes, let's smash everything. <laughs> no, all you need to do is just remove the film from the well, light. Well, he sma- <laughs> first of all, he smashes it open and then he just gives it, gets the gets the <laughs> film, the gets a little negative and just gives it a little yank. Yeah. Just gives it a little yank. And you're thinking... And you're like, that solved it. <laughs> no, it does it does it buggery. <laughs> they all stand up and say, well, we're all right now. Yeah, we're fine. And then, and then somebody else dies as well. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the uh, Rosemary tries getting out of the cupboard, don't they? And they that's Break right. Break yeah. fingers. Oh god, yeah, yeah. That's just slamming the door on her yeah, fingers. It's like the coke machine. Yeah. But then they end up trapped. Well, they're trapped, but they, they barricade in, in themselves the gallery, into the yeah. into the kind of top tier yeah. of the seating bank. So so it's above the like the ground floor level. Um kind of proscenium, I think it's proscenium arch or yeah, level, yeah. whatever it is called. Um but they decide to barricade themselves in <laughs> there because that's a really safe area. To, to do that in. But, so you've got height. Yeah. You've got no way of getting anywhere. Nope. The only way of getting in and out, you just barricade. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's just ridiculous. Oh, and they find the blind guy. And it's the like... The blind guy. That's the it. oracle. Yeah, the oracle is, you know, like the... Uh... <laughs> It's an oracle. And he's like, it's like, it's not the film. It's the cinema that's cursed. But he touched he touched the mask, didn't he, when he first came in? And goes, yeah, he's like... Please, don't touch it. It's awful. Yeah, they still go into the movie. Mm-hmm. 
They, Italian films do have a thing about like blind people and the kind of oracle thing because mm. have you seen the Beyond? Yeah, yeah, Lucio yeah, Fulci's yeah. blind because yeah. they all start going blind as well, and we'll talk about going blind in the second one as well. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh, I completely forgot about that. I so, I, also, I forgot to mention like when the film opens, they've been given this ticket and they're like, they're like. Um, yeah, we should probably go home to the headmistress and stuff. And they're like, nah, fuck it, let's go see this free film. And they're looking at the ticket. And it has the exact same font that's on the building when they walk up to the building. And they, they look at the ticket. They look at the building with the font on. They look at the ticket and they look at the building. They went, yeah, I think this one's it. <laughs> this is the place. And it's just like, of course it fucking is. It's exactly the same. You, don't, you just have to hold it up once, but they do it for like five, to ten minutes. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm not quite sure. Mm. <laughs> Apparently, as well, this this cinema was was featured in a Silent Hill game as well, like a yeah. little, little cameo, uh, which I think is kind of cool. Yeah, like, it's, nice, it's, nice a, it's a nightclub now, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's a yeah. night. It's a nightclub. It used to be. It did used to be a cinema. Yeah, um, I, I imagine they'll be playing. They they must have played the Demon soundtrack. Yeah, there. definitely. I mean, I, I mean, I, I would have had it. Like, Doo-doo. get the get your screens up, yeah. play Demons, play the soundtrack, and just have a. And good on, night. on a side note, if you're ever concerned when you watch this movie what era it's set in, don't bother. Within the first 30 seconds, yeah. it's just stereotypical. It is one of the most 80s films I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. It makes 16 Candles look like a masterpiece. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> it's like sitting down and go, oh, I wonder what. No. Um, but anyway, back, yeah. back to the back, back to, to the, the, the Oracle. So the guy blind. Yeah. It's he says the yeah. cinema's curse. But what he didn't rely on is the fact that the pimp has now took control, mm. and he has said, stands up and says, they're infecting us. Liz, who's lying there, mm. poor Liz. She needs to be thrown over the over the banister. Yeah, it did, yeah. And there is there is a strange thing in this film, which I, we talked about on the way home. No one talks to each other. They all just shout at each other. <laughs> which is really... And they don't... He doesn't kind of enamor himself to anyone to help no. him. So he gets his body and he's trying to say, we get all of our legs. He goes, I'm not going to do it. He goes, yeah. do it, you son of a bitch. <laughs> and you've heard no. No, oh, for me. I'm not... Say please. I mean, is it's not like he's struggling to carry it. No. <laughs> he can just do it himself. Yeah, yeah. And I think he does, doesn't he? Do it in the end, or he drops. Yeah, a, the other one. The, the, that's the right. The, the 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 fella gets up, yeah. doesn't he? And then and then and then he's like, he gets rid of him. But then the guy who was hung earlier climbs up the rope because the guy's like, we better cut this because someone might climb up the rope. And then he gets attacked by the other ones. And then he climbs up and then and then he he drags him down so the pimp and all of the rest yeah, of them yeah. go over. But it's the same. He gives, he gives him this like, he goes switchblade because yeah, he's, right. he's a pimp. Yeah. I think know. he threatens the guy who doesn't, yeah. who doesn't grab the legs, doesn't Cause he? Because he gives it him and goes, what's wrong with you? Are you scared of a knife? Hold that thought about being scared of a knife. <laughs> Maybe he's scared of little knives. Oh. Big ones, I think he might be all right with. Yeah. Um, I mean, in The Amazing Spider-Man, his greatest weakness was small knives. So, And sticking to glass. Yeah. But anyway. <laughs> 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 um, so there's, there's lots of kind of like little, little subplots because they kind of break up into the little segments. Hmm. And it's still flashing forward to the um, punks. Yeah. Who are now um, yeah. snorting coke? We've got, we've got to somehow shoe hit, shoehorn yeah. in all these tracks we paid for. Yeah, <laughs> out, out of um, a coke can. Yeah, doing co- coke. cocaine out of a coke can. Yeah, yeah. no product placement at all. Um, oh, they also. Well, it's, it's not. It's not quite Hudson Hawk, but. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, just, I'm going to go back a second. There's a bit with with a scream in, and she goes, "That's a real scream." No, it's not. It's the Dolby sound. <laughs> I love that. That was a great line. <laughs> I've just done that. <laughs> a big I, love when, teeth. I love when they're like, they're like, oh, uh, it's like Nostradamus. That sounds like a rap group. No, it doesn't. <laughs> that has never sounded like a rap group ever. Again, probably a metal group, but not a fucking rap. Well, it's group. Fu- it, there's five bands called Nostradamus. <laughs> metal. There you go. Um, All metal. So yeah, so the, the, you've got these. Um, they basically spilt the 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 cocaine. Hmm. Because they've been fighting over it. Of course. T- to this extent, Ripper gets very annoyed. Ripper is bagging basement. I mean, ha- size if- storm. So let's let's imagine. I mean, you you used to work in the police days, so yes. you might know this. So, if that coke can is full of cocaine, how much are we talking? At today's prices or nineteen eighty five prices? I don't know. Adjust for inflation. A lot. Hundred yeah. thousands. Yeah. Thousands. Yeah. Like two thousand, three thousand. Yeah. 
something like that. So fair enough, I'd be pretty fucked off as well if you'd spilt but it. What I don't understand is when when they collect it all back, it only cover, only covers half an envelope. <laughs> <laughs> so she's not done a very good job. Well, also most of it goes down that girl's top, doesn't it? Yeah, with the weirdest razor blade on breast thing. I I just don't understand at all. I mean. I'm surprised you've seen more razor blade and breast scenes than 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 the, but, just this. No, no, but this is she's almost getting off on it at one point. Mm. She's like, ooh, ooh. <laughs> and then he, then he cuts her. Yeah, with it. It's. It, I think it's it's purely there for the for the titillation. Yeah, and like, she gets her boobs out all the time, doesn't it? It's, yeah. it's very reminiscent of uh, what she called the punk lady from the zombie movie, and she dances. Oh, in the um, oh god. Uh, What's her name? She's been in hundreds of movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, God, why have I forgotten her name? I'm drawing a blank on her name. Yeah, I am so. But she, Return of the Living Dead. She's yeah, in. she looks very similar. Yeah, very she was in uh, sort of Savage Streets. Yeah, yeah. What the fuck is her name? Hopefully it'll come back. Reanimate. She reanimate? No, she's not. That's, no, that's not, the other one. That's Barbara Re- Crampton, Barbara that one, yeah. yeah. I will look it up now because yeah. it's going gonna, it's gonna to fucking annoy me. If so I don't the, know. The, the police turn up and they're in a stolen car mm. and they run away mm-hmm. and the police don't even give chase. They stand there going, it's a dead end. It's a blind alley. <laughs> so they run down and then the people in the cinema must be really, really stupid because the back door opens. <laughs> and they sneak in. But as they sneak in, something sneaks out. <gasps> Who could it, what could it possibly be? Linnea Quigley. <laughs> yes. That's a, yes. That's a screen queen herself. Yes. I'm a bit annoyed I forgot. Quite happy of getting her boobies out. Yeah. Well, it's made a career pretty much, yeah. didn't it? Yeah, which so, she said. She's, yeah, she's said that all the yeah. time, hasn't she? And then she's like asking more money for it and they gave her. So. Yeah. Because <laughs> they were like, they've already, Listen, they've already seen the goods, so they're if like... people want to pay me on my OnlyFans um, to get my nipples out, I will. I'm sure, I'm sure you would, Dennis. I will I'm do, sure you definitely. Would. So you, you've, got, you've now got the demons on the outside one demon on the outside yeah the so police, the, blind, the blind guy gets loose yeah. and starts kind of infecting people and then you've got now you've got the punks in the cinema but they're just fodder really aren't they well I, I mean it just it really like I get why you would want an interlude for, for all the action just give, kind of give you a breather but it doesn't add anything. And it slows it right down. It slows it right down. There's not really anything going on. Like, nothing, like, they're all just punks like, ah, cocaine, let's, ah, let's, cocaine. Yeah. Let's that's make all... Berlin look like London. Yeah, and that's that's it. And and it's an excuse to play the music, it's an excuse to, to have them doing cocaine. It's an excuse for the product place, placement. Yeah, they're just it's just a pointless scene. Um, again, it's there's a similar one in the second one, but that is even more pointless. Yeah, yeah, com- um, there's a few in the, the yeah. The there's ones. a few a lot. There's a lot more of that stuff going on. But, but while all this is going on, there's the demons. And they also are, they also die really quickly as well. As I said, they're just yeah. odd. They just, just they come die, yeah. they come yeah, straight yeah. in and they get killed yeah. straight away. In that room, there's something about that mirror, isn't there? <laughs> so, yeah, just like, just like just women wanting to check themselves yeah. out in the mirror. They're it's like mirror, mirror on the wall. Maybe it's maybe that's saying vain people should be less vain or they might die. Do you think it's kind of like slasher rules in this? Because no. it's like. Because there's no rules to this. No, true, true. no true. rules at all. I watched um, I watched In the Search of Darkness two, the documentary, yeah. like four hours of eighties horror, and they mentioned demons in this. And they got they got the uh, Rosemary, Rosemary, the yeah. the actress who has the pimple at the start and infects everybody else. And she's like, "Oh, they spent a long time coming up with those rules for for this film." And I went, "Did they fuck?" Because they throw them out the window. Left and right. They argue over. Them. This is the problem about having four writers. Yeah, exactly. They just argued over them, and I just think that a gentleman in the end said they're going to be my rules. Yeah, fuck it. We'll um, just have that because w- you know whatever I want will happen. <laughs> because it it even though it's directed by what's his face, mm-hmm. it is a, I think is Argento's movie. It's got his fingerprints all over it. He oh. uses the same lighting. There's a, a Col- one, lot of yeah, color. Lots, of, same sort of colors. Yeah, gels and yeah. stuff. And there's there's if you ever see the the, like the DVD box or something, it shows the demons coming up the steps, mm. which is one of my all time favorite shots about anything because the music's great with yeah. it as well. And you've got the glowing eyes, yeah, as well. yeah, and that's that's all are gentle. Oh yeah, yeah. pure, so all, all pure. Um, pure. So yeah, so while all this is going on, there's some wonderful shots of demons running around the building. Mm. So you got these punks coming in and they fire a gun off. So what do you think the survivors think? So they would think time to time to get out even though the demons could still be there. Daniel, I know you've only just seen the movie, but that's exactly what they did. Oh, my God. 
but shocked. I think if I was there and I had guns fire, I would probably wait for someone to say police or yeah. whatever. I wouldn't just Is think, anybody alive in there? Yeah, I wouldn't just think, guns, let's go. I think guns, danger. Yeah, I would think, stay away from the guns. Yeah. But luckily for us, we have George, who kind of says, please don't do it. It's a silly thing to do. Please don't do any of this. But they don't listen to him. So they, George and his little, George and Ken. Sounds wonderful. Ken. Sounds George like toys, Ken. doesn't it? George yeah. and Ken. Yeah, George and Ken. And Barbie. Yeah. Anyway, never mind. That's, that's a while later. <laughs> um, so there's... So they go off, but then it cuts to Hannah and her boyfriend. So at this at this point, hmm. her boyfriend hasn't even noticed Hannah's missing. Hannah has been on her own on the bottom of the cinema, covered in demon vomit, blood, probably a bit of poo. Yeah. A bit of wee, you know. Well, one of them falls directly on her yeah, and starts yeah. bleeding all over, doesn't and- she? Boyfriend's not even give a shit. Not I'm bothered. I, I didn't. I didn't even notice him run away because he just he proper abandons her and leaves yeah, her. Yeah. But I didn't notice it when I was watching. This, it. That random woman, really hot woman who just walks up, walks down, has a cigarette, walks back in. Where'd she come from? <laughs> <laughs> Never seen her before. So her and so Hannah and her boyfriend hatch a plan how to escape, mm. um, and she's she's full of shit basically. Yeah, they're still embracing kiss. I think that's mm. a, a, a lesson for us all. Yeah. No matter what you're covered in, there's still always time for a kiss. Mm. I tell you what, one of the more effective scenes I think is is dur- with those two characters. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're trying to find a way out of the cinema, find an air vent. Even even though it's a massive air vent, they still they seem to really struggle getting through it. It's like his legs just stop working. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's just like his back legs, and he's like, ah, and he's like struggling so much, and he can hear, and you start hearing these and seeing these demon nails scratching on the vents. It's like they're getting closer and closer, and he's like, oh, I keep hearing them. They're coming, quick, quick. Um, you know, they're behind us, quick, quick, quick. And then he's like, and then he. He, he says, quick, get in front of me, I'll protect you. And then he's like, oh no, they're coming from the other, they're coming from the front now, what's going on? And then it turns out that his girlfriend has turned into a demon. Yeah. And then eats Without it. being scratched. Without being scratched as anyway. well. Anyway. So yeah, again, the lo- the logic of the infection and the stuff. Again, it, it's it's quite, the more I think about it, the more it is like Evil Dead. It's yeah. because, because Evil Dead didn't necessarily have no. a set rule or what have you. It would just be like, oh, you're going to turn evil now. Yeah. Or yeah. this. It's wherever, goes where, wherever they want to scare, wherever they want to yeah. go, they'll, 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 they'll yeah. do it. It's kind of... Before we move on, I love a little fact for you again. Go Blind on. Man. They yeah. wanted Vincent Price to play him. Really? Yeah. That's cool. Can you imagine having him in that movie? That would have been good. He wouldn't have gone, Liz! <laughs> Liz! I, pro- I imagine he. Probably didn't like the script. What or, script? Or lack thereof. I think it was um, done in the back of a like cardboard box or something. Lorry. Like. Yeah. Cornflakes box. Yeah. Um, and again, it's probably not that... In- it's not that interesting a role. Like, uh, they would... I think they would have had to considerably beef up that role. Yeah. If yeah. it was going to be Vincent Price. But don't you think he has a bit of the Vincent Price look? Yeah, at a little bit. There's, a, bit I found, gaunt, there's a gaunt... Yeah, I found that this afternoon. And when I, when I saw him walk yeah, into the cinema thought, the light, I thought, I see that. Yeah. I, can, I get that. They've gone because they're doing this. They go for bargain basement Stallone, bargain basement um, Vincent Price, and bargain Michael Dudikoff. Yeah, he does. But he is Michael Dudikoff is bargain Michael Dudikoff. True. true. So I don't. It's really low. Then (laughs) it's a low bar. (laughs) Yeah, it's a low bar for Italian films. So the the film now is mainly following our four. Yeah, the four kind of young love interests, and this is transformation of one of them. Mm. Um, My favorite. Kathy. Kathy. Mm. Who, even when she's... Even when she's turning into a demon, she still looks very attractive. Yeah. And I, they, I think they've done it on purpose because mm. there's, there's there's like... There's a pole. She's leaning against a pole mm. and she's dead sweaty and her hair is... Yeah. You get the eyes first. Yeah, and her eyes go like... They've got like red contacts and she looks and she... It's like she's covered in sheen, like she's about to do flash dance or something. <laughs> and she kind of slowly slides down the pole... And it's not like if it was me, I'd go. Yeah. What are you doing down there? But she slowly goes down, and then her head goes down, yeah. and she looks up again, and a few more teeth, and then mm. she's changed. But if she was a knock on your door right now, 
and said, Dennis, make a woman out of me, even if she was demon, I would say, let me bring my wife and ass first. <laughs> I, I love then that uh, Ken like grabs like a grate. It's a great, yeah. yeah. And then starts slamming like because she goes full transformation, and he starts like slamming her head with a grate. And then Cheryl's like, "No, Kathy, no!" And he's like, "He's like, look at her. She's a demon. <laughs> yeah, look at it. Look, look at her. She's a demon. It's fine. I can hit her. She's a demon." <laughs> and then uh, Ken gets scratched, and then and then well, he's... who scratches Ken? I thought it was was it was it Kathy? What no? comes out of Kathy's back? Oh shit! Of course, I forgot the the probably the best special effect in yeah, the, in the film, yeah. apart from the teeth being pushed out, nails being pushed out, is Kathy has a backburster demon yeah. comes out of a her fully fledged teeth demon. Yeah, it's got horns yeah. and hair and all sorts and smiles, <laughs> smart and big grin, lovely big grin. But it's probably the yeah, like I said, it's probably the best special but effect. Don't you think they ruined it though? Because he he comes out, scratches Ken, and then. That jogs off. Yeah, <laughs> little legs, little legs grow into the sun. And you, so you, do, you do see him later. You do yeah. see him later, kind of um, fully formed. Another thing about which, which again, the rules. Why do they all change at different rates? Yes. Yeah. Some change instantly. So no matter what the injuries or whatever it is. Yeah. It's it's like it's like in um, it's like in Alien, all the Alien films, the the chest burster. Sequence seems to get shorter and shorter mm. into into each sequel because they they're like we need to get to the alien quicker. Come on, faster and quicker. This is the same movie. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they just throw it's just, just throw it it's out. Just weird. But um, yeah, and <sighs> you you get more freakouts. But yeah, I have to talk about the the coolest moment of this film uh, in the in the um, the kind of the foyer. There is this kendo samurai on a bike with a katana samurai sword. And uh, George, the lead, um, jumps on it, jumps on that, grabs a sword, grabs Cheryl, and starts driving through this cinema. To heavy metal. To heavy metal music, swinging the samurai sword, cutting up all these demons, driving on the chairs, like, vroom, right over the chairs. Uh, and it, it goes on. Uh, it probably goes on for a bit too long, but it is glorious. It is great, It is yeah. absolutely glorious. And you can't really... You know, for pure 80s coolness, uh, I don't think you can really beat samurai swords and motorbikes combined. Um, just even when excellent. He, even when he fucks off and goes around the corner a bit too fast and show flies off the back, <laughs> he gets off his bike and he's still slashing and hacking. Still. Yeah. Um, but I, no, I, th- I, think, I think you've missed out the, the most emotional moment in the film. Oh, please, please. Uh... Where Ken is changing into... Oh yeah, sorry. Demon. Sorry, I had skipped ahead. And he um he asks his best friend, mm. maybe a bit more than friends, mm. to, to end his life. Mm. George doesn't want to do it. No. He shouts at him, I'm not doing it! I'm not doing just, it. just tell him you don't have to shout at him, he's yeah. changing, he's having a bad it's Very day. dramatic. Yeah. Whole film's very dramatic. Tries giving him the sword. No, I'm not I'm not doing it, I'm not doing I'm glad it. Glad you said sword. <laughs> it could be a euphemism. <laughs> um and it's 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 beautiful. And then he turns round, Ken, and he's a fully fledged demon now. Mm. Again, change really quick. Yeah, again. Yeah. So, George only does one thing: a very long, slow motion, gritted teeth swipe of the sword. It's a bit. It's a bit like the shot from um, the first Friday the Thirteenth, isn't it? That machete swing yeah. at the end. Uh, it it is, looks a bit like that. It is a beautiful moment. And um, listeners, what I'll say to you is, mm. if Dan ever turns into a demon and he says to me kill me I've probably already done it to be fair Even, what, what if I said it as a joke though and you were like, I was like oh, it's a joke. we don't joke about demons it's like a joke we don't, we don't joke about stuff like that <laughs> you know if you, if you think you're going to turn into it I'll just do it you know don't don't joke about things like that especially when I've got a sword I won't, I won't joke I won't joke you know, I but promise I, will, I, will, I promise on those uh, those times I will do it in a in those in those end times. Yeah. I will. I will not. But change. if I'm changing into a demon, yeah. please think about it. Right. Because I've got so it. much to give. You just want to murder me, don't you? That's what it I is. I don't want to murder you. You just, just want to murder me. I, in either scenario, I end up murdered. Basically. Yeah, but it's, you, you're going to turn into a demon and murder other people. So I've got I've I've got to look after the bigger picture. Right. Okay. You know, you sacrifice the few mm. to save the masses. Mm, of course. So I sacrifice you to save the world. 
So, so before the end of the film, because we, I want to get on to the next film. Because sorry, I forget we got. Yeah, we've got another one to talk about, don't we? Um, we'll but, get that. We'll get through that one quicker. You know, how could they possibly escape? For what? What in the world? That it's all locked up. Even that door isn't open anymore. How the hell can they get out? Magic helicopter crashes through the cinema, providing them every bit of <laughs> of plot contrivance they need to escape this cinema. There is a helicopter that crashes through the ceiling, uh, and it just so happens, like he goes straight into the helicopter. Like he's like he he knows something is there, and I'm like, what is he looking for in the helicopter? It turns out there's a fucking harpoon in the helicopter. High powered, high harpoon. gas powered, yeah, harpoon. With the helicopter, with winch, with winch uh, the winches them up and utility and belt. a utility belt <laughs> again. It's quite quite similar to the second one as well with some of the equipment yeah, yeah. that just kind of magically appears. <laughs> uh, winches up to the roof. They're they're out, and then Mikhail Suave turns up with his metal face and tries to kill them. But again. he's got a bit of a demon voice, and he's a bit growly. Yeah, he's, he's got he's some more, more yeah, yeah. demony face. So I think I think your theory. I think you're about him. Yeah. the movie. Being prior yeah, to, I to think, this, yeah, I think that's a good good bet. But then, then part of me also thinks that maybe that's occurring at the same time, like like that's like because because it, I don't I don't think it's possible for that one blind demon to have infected the whole city by the end because by the end they get out and the whole city is basically infected and in flames and stuff. So I'm thinking it's happening at several different locations. But if we go off the rules from Kathy and George, hmm. she, he basically changed within minutes. True. So if they're all doing that, running around yeah, scratching and, each other... Yeah, within minutes. Yeah. Like, now we're going off the transformation between the, the end character who yeah. changes and the demon, uh-huh. which probably takes an hour and a half. Mm. Who knows? Yeah. And again, not even scratch, no yeah. damage. I do, um, I, do like the, I do like the way they kill him. Mm. Pale his face. Yeah, they get his metal face. Yeah. And put, like, his eye and his yeah. metal face. I don't want really to just push him off, but yeah. you know, I, I think that's a good way of doing it. Yeah, so they get out, get off the top of the cinema, they, they get down, and then this, this jeep runs by as they're being chased, and this weird gun-toting family um, you know, drives off, and they're like, we're going to make a new life for ourselves, away from all these demons. During the samurai fight, which I'm going to call it samurai bike fight, uh, George gets slashed. So by the rules that they've established, he should become a demon. Yeah. But he doesn't. No. By the end of the film, he doesn't. Like a quite an extended amount of time that he's not becoming a demon. There's no there's no kind of like, you've been cut, you're gonna turn into a demon. No, I'm not. There's none of that. It's just like carry on, go, go, go. Um they don't have time to think about it. And then they're driving away, credits start to roll. And then again, get a kind of a Friday the 13th stinger at the end where Cheryl's just scratching her neck. She's got a little boil spot thing, pops, becomes a demon. And then the gun-toting child, shotgun-toting child, blows her away. And that's where the film ends. But you never see Cheryl get scratched, cut, or anything. No, it just happens. Do you think they did it because they didn't want to kill a leading man? I guess he's a scream... King? It's been in quite a few things. Did you say Scream King? I don't know. Is that the same? Mm, Italian movies don't have the same sort of tropes as made with the final, no, I guess final girl, do they? No, I guess not. I don't think it really matters no, necessarily. I just think it's odd that he's mm. been scratched. Really, he should have changed. But maybe maybe him. that's the maybe that's the thing where it's like, surprise, he was scratched. You thought he was going to turn, but he doesn't because it's here. Maybe it's like a surprise ending. Or maybe they just lost the plot. Maybe maybe four or five writers is too many for a script. How about that? It is if you're baking a cake. And like we said, like like we said, there's just there's no real structure. There's no like characters don't develop. They don't change. Like there's there's not like oh I'm afraid of like where she's like I'm afraid of horror movies. She she doesn't come out of it going I'm not afraid of anything now or anything like that. It's just like the main the main female character has no depth. She's, you know, a very, very good looking lady, but there's just nothing. Just screams a lot. Yeah. And George hasn't got much to him either. Ken doesn't have much to him. And Kathy oh, doesn't have much. He's, he's, like, got none, none... he's got good arms. Yeah. But I mean, there's just, but there's, there's, again, it's more visual. It's more the spectacle. It's more the cinematography. It's not necessarily plot or structure. I do, I do like, and that this is, I, I'm going to use this in the comparison yeah. as well. As the movie goes on, George loses less and less of his shirt throughout mm. the end he's just 
muscle and pure sweat. muscle and sinew. So anyway, that's yes. demons. That's demons. Very good. Uh, very fun. If you're looking for dumb, fun, half an hour to waste, and you don't want to think too much. The, the, there's demons a video on YouTube. What Carl? What what, uh, what says it's the best horror film you've not seen? Yeah, and it is great. Yeah. I I love it. Joe Blow. Joe Blow yeah. do a good series I, on. I that. I think it's entertaining. If nothing else is is entertaining. If you like oh, your gore yeah. and like kind of that sort of tearing of flesh and stuff, yeah. then it's it's for you. If you like eighties horror, you like all yeah. that kind of stuff. If you like your your special effects, this is for you. Turn your brain off and you'll have a good time, I think, with this. So when the movie was released, it made shitloads of money. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was only released in the cinema in Italy, but released on VHS everywhere else, mm-hmm. and it did really, really good money. So obviously, you know, Argento went. Fuck, got to get another one out. <laughs> get one out now. Get one out now. So they Get it out last week. They started production on De- Team and Demons 2 and they released it eight months after the first one. So, so that's, not, qu- that's quite a quick yeah. turnaround. And they filmed it all in four weeks. Mm. So the entire Demon Team and Demons 2 mm. was filmed in four weeks on a third of the budget. Right. So that... The same team, the same yeah, yeah. special effects guy, mm-hmm. um, Director. different different composer. Yeah, um, not not sim- sim- no, no, different different composer, but same writers, same agenda presents, yeah. all that same same same, stuff, same same but on less of a budget. Hmm. So the movie kind of moves to a tower block. It, it is effectively the same movie. Like there's a lot, the there's a yeah. lot of similarities. Yeah. It's not in exactly the same. There's different. Characters as different kind of scenes and scenarios. You've but got the Evil Dead comparison again, there, haven't you? Yeah, true. Evil Dead Two, it's kind of a remake, much a remake of, of Evil Dead. So yeah, um, it just moves the action to a tower block instead of instead of a cinema and instead of a film. It is a documentary, which kind of it kind of says like the de- the demons one kind of happened, yeah, and that it existed and that it was kind of localized to one area. So I'm guessing like Berlin. But it, when they when they go there in this documentary, they travel there and go past this barbed wire fence and wall. Um, it looks like it's like Hiroshima. Like it looks like he's from years mm. ago. I like so I'm thinking like some a decent amount of time has passed, and they were able to somehow contain the demon. I also think security is a bit lax. Yeah, I mean, is it even a documentary or is it like a is it like a docu drama? Do you think? I don't oh, care. Do you think it's a fictional thing? Yeah, <laughs> I don't care. No, it's it's the same story as the first one, just with different characters. Yeah, there's four four teens. They want to find some. In the first one, they want to find natural diamonds, yeah. and this one, they want to find demons. Um, they break into this compound, mm. like you said, like Irish, yeah. that has has kept demons at bay. Yet they break into it in less than two minutes. True. With a bit of rope, mm. bit of carpet, and. Guts. Yeah. <laughs> Determination. Um, so in this in this tower block, um, you've got quite a few different characters. Yeah, yeah. Um, you've got a woman having a party called Sally, mm-hmm. who's a bit of a bitch, mm-hmm. who's a bit of a drama queen. Yep. You have um, a pregnant lady whose um, husband, boyfriend... George. Yeah, George. Um, George and who, Hannah. Who I've decided is now Clark Kemp, because he looks like Superman. Yeah, it's really he weird. does, yeah. Um, you have a guy who's um, got an escort coming around. Can only have sex with her when the telly's on. Only have sex with the TV on. Mm-hmm. It's like me. I only have sex every millennium. So <laughs> um, and you've got a security guard, which is Ripper from the first from movie. From the last one, yeah. yeah. And you've got a you've got a, a, a gym, a gym full of full of gym bunnies, S- uh, full of small penis um, jacked up, like a like a Eric Prids video. Yeah, and it's like. So much steroids, and you get the they get the pimp who's the main trainer. Yeah, who's, who, trainer. again, he's just shouting at people, just shouting at people, yeah, I mean, which is yeah. cool. Um, and you've got a gentle daughter. There's a little bit of family yeah. unit. She's interested in watching yeah. watching. She's the film. her family. Um, and then you've got a kid, kid who's been left on his own yeah. by by parents that I describe as the McCanns did, of, yeah. of the yeah. situation. So he's watching this horror movie thing about demons on his own. The phone rings. He answers it. He goes, no, mum, dad, I'm on my own. And he's like, what, six, seven? Um, and then you have a um, a lady with a dog. Yes. yes which is did. the tallest dog in the world. Big dog. big Massive dog. Clifford, Clifford size yeah, dog. Yeah, huge, huge dog. So those are pretty much the main characters. Mm. Um, again, you get the fodder. 
Yeah. Um, and there are we get we get this we get another scene of yeah another four. Punks. So you get so you get the parents the uh, the McCanns as I'd like to yeah. call them, and then you get another four punks in a car now listening to more like new wave music mm. and things like that. It's less heavy metal this Smiths soundtrack. Smiths and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, Smiths and stuff like that. Um, and they they are like. They try calling the kid, but the, all the electricity has gone in the house. Um, and the punks are driving, and again, they're like, woo, you know, and they're proper, like, jazzed up and like, yeah, we're driving, yeah. Uh, and their two cars collide. Like, you spend all this time cutting back to them, again, with this interlude thing, and they don't even make it inside the building. They do not. So it is a purely pointless interludes that it you makes don't need no sense at there's all. even an interlude where you go and see sally's having this party this party's going on it's the main kind of where the de- where all the demon infection starts and you see her parents who is played by one of the fathers played by lambert and barvo makes his cameo but then you don't see them again so it's pointless again no, another two point- scenes one where he's whinging about oh they don't wreck the house yeah. nudge nudge wink wink yeah and one where his wife says you don't even like this music yeah and that's, that's it. it that's it so and then you get those yeah. car scene you've got uh, Sally says oh no Jacob's coming who's one of the punks yeah so and there's a bit, a bit of a bit of she has a meltdown yeah and then sends kicks him out sends this poor lad with glasses mm. outside and he spends the entire movie looking at his watch mm. but survives he does survive survives yeah. seemingly survives so well pretty much everyone in that cat crash probably survived I don't know there's a lot of blood <laughs> there's a lot of blood coming from that girl's head and there was blood from the other guy. Yeah, I think they'd be all right. I think the McCanns might be dead. Pla- well, the McCanns deserve... <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> the... <laughs> That's not what I meant. <laughs> what I mean is these characters... Political statements. These characters within this fictional um, I've, motion I've picture... nicknamed the McCanns. ...called um, Demons, Demons 2. Demons 2. And um, my, my friend, colleague, and best buddy in the world... Um, Dan has, has given them a nickname. That's that's Daniel. Yeah, I gave them the nickname. McCanns. Um, and I may have said the McCanns deserve to die. Yeah, but not no not, no the not, McCann, not connected McCann. to real life. No, M- much like much like the f- the film within a film. We were a podcast yeah. within a podcast. So, yeah, so did not I to come, worry. Did I cover that over. I think so. Sorry. I think I think you I think you're safe. Good, I think good. Uh, you know. I don't think I'm going to get um, any any kind of. I don't think we'll get pulled down. or, no, or no. any complaints. Um, um, so what basically kind of happens is it's very similar to the same of, of the first movie. They're, they're in this place looking for demons. They find a nail. They're taking pictures. Um, Sally is at this this meltdown because yeah. of Jacob's she, coming. She's in a room watching the documentary yeah. of them going through the, the demon compound thing. One of the, one of the women cuts the, the, the finger um, and the guy goes, it's just a scratch, you know, grow up kind of thing. And then they, they, they find... Basically, like a dead demon has been rotting and stuff. The blood from her finger drops on his teeth, a bit like Dracula. I think. Yeah, I a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then they're trying to take pictures, but the flash doesn't work on on the camera. But in Sally's apartment, mm. they try taking a picture, and the flash doesn't work there. Mm. So again, the things are happening at the same parallels. Time. Yeah, things are happening at the same time. So the, the demon comes alive with. That kind of blowing up, you know, where they suck the air out. Yeah, I thought effect. that was a really good effect. Yeah, actually. I thought it was yeah. good. Yeah, I like that. Um, so I, know, I know they don't have as much. The, there is an issue with yes. the money and the budget on special effects, especially in this one. In compa- I think I, I wouldn't have noticed it as much if I didn't watch the two films tonight back to back. I wouldn't have noticed the lack of the drop in, um, you know, budget between the two films. There's also a lot more demons in this one. Yes, which but- is weird. But also, I don't think you get a lot of close-ups of those particular no, demons. Really, no. there's a lot of quick shots, a lot of quick editing. It, you know, it, it may it may seem like there's more as well because of the editing. And I would also argue the more zombie-like in this one. Yeah, they're more like a horde mm. than they were in the, in the yeah. other one. Yeah, especially the the simpler, more basic makeup yeah, makes yeah. them look more zombie-like, um, more and kind the of one green. That looks like Incredible Hulk. Yes, there was which is, yeah, which is bizarre. Um, so the really good effect in this is when so the demon's alive on the on on the TV, goes around, kills the teens, whatever, and then this bit when I watched it originally shit me right up because he looks at you through the TV, mm. so you're now Sally watching watching the film, and he's getting closer and closer, and then the camera is from the TV looking at Sally, mm. and then it's back round again. The only issue with this is the fucking strobe lighting. 
throughout the, the I have problems throughout the yeah. whole movie. It really, especially the scene later on, it really irritated me. I will, I will say that, like, I, I genuinely think there should have been a warning at the cinema. I'm not, I'm not sure if they were aware themselves of how I can't, I've never was. remembered that much strobe lighting. Yeah. If you are going to watch this, just bear in mind yeah. if you are an epileptic, if you do suffer from that photosensitive epilepsy, I think it, I, it's maybe not for you. Yeah, on the scene later we'll talk about. I think it's done on purpose mm. to detract from the fact the effects are shite, yeah, and to kind of make you kind of start getting pissed mm. off. But anyway, so the the, the the demon's walking close and close to the TV, mm. and then he comes through the telly. But kind of like in uh, Videodrome, it's like plastic and, his, you know, his hands and yeah, his, yeah. his teeth. So it's not it's not like a um, ring where she climbs out of the TV and yeah. the, it's more kind of, I love that sort of effect. So the, the well, it's, it's almost like, it's kind of that, it reminds me of Nightmare on Elm Street. Yes, you have behind the, the wall. Yeah. You have the wall, but then also he has the Dream Warriors where mm. he is the TV. So it's kind of somewhere between those yeah. two effects. Um, so I can definitely see that, but I like that because he's clearly like there's clearly some fabric, and he's got the makeup on yeah. behind the fabric. He's you pushing see his against teeth it as well. Yeah, you it? see because yeah. it, it could have just been a guy without any of the makeup yeah, on, yeah. but you, I like that they've put the makeup on and then pushed him against the fabric while projecting the image of the demon from the TV on it because it makes it seem a bit more because I would have noticed that's a detail I would have noticed yeah, yeah, yeah. if they didn't bother to do that so I'm glad they really I'm glad that they went even though I can't they, you can't literally see it no but, but I can by the indentations on yeah, the fabric yeah, yeah. you know that they've done the makeup and it's, it's his face because he's, mm, he's got the same guy yeah he's got a pretty distinct face hasn't mm. he he's quite small and yeah. Got, yeah TV goes off Sally's banging it on they go oh I'm, I'm a I'm a bit so silly. Hmm. It's, it's just a TV program. Goes and hits a TV. Hmm. Turns around, boom, he's there. <laughs> yeah. And then we cut away. Someone having dinner. And then yeah. cut back to more singing Happy Birthday. So a- Asia, Asia Argento's yeah, family, yeah. yeah. Sally walks in, birthday. But it's a really nice, it's really nice lit room because the door opens because there's no lights on because it's the singing Happy Birthday. Hmm. There's like... Um, Dry ice behind a nice white silhouette of her. And she's very kind of gangly. All legs and arms, isn't she, Sally? She's like... Yeah. She's long. Yeah, it's a, yeah lanky. Quite yeah. lanky, yeah. Um, and then we have the transformation, which is very reminiscent of the first one. But not as well, I don't think. No, I don't think it works. And it's not done as as slowly and it doesn't build Not up that smooth. I would say that about the first film is it, it keeps that tension throughout I yeah. I think there's a lot of kind of not dead moments but kind of lulls in that tension yeah. in this one uh, I also think that we we don't really know where everybody is like I think it's probably a budgetary thing again like you were you they were able to afford to have everybody on set and to cater to everybody on set uh and to cover all that within the day but obviously they've gone we need to spend more time so we're going to split everybody up um they've got their own little they're a bit, there's a bit more kind of character archy stuff going yeah, on i'd say yeah. um uh, but it's clear that there's not it's not really as seamless yeah, as the first one i discussed this with you as well it's mm. it's the in- interior mm. is not the exterior. So the building the film outside is an office block. Yeah. There's like four of them. And then the scenes of the front of the of the apartment block mm. isn't anywhere. Yeah. From any any angle you see it, it's not there. No. And then the crash happens right outside because this is the guy waiting for him. But when they walk out, there's no road there. So yeah. it's all a bit disjointed. Yeah. Um But I, I, I think I, it's budgets again. Yeah, I think it's a bud- I think yeah. it's a budgetary thing. I think they've gone right we want to do the same film again. We'll keep it basically the same, but we'll see how we can manage this. And I think by segmenting it, making those different segments and splitting up those characters, I think it does lose something of that yeah. like emergency situation. It, it does seem slower to yeah. me. I don't know how you felt about it. Oh, that. definitely, yeah. I felt, just, I felt there was moments where I was like... I, I was fidgeting a lot more, Yeah, um, which is always a sign that it's it's not... Uh, is grabbing, yeah. And like I said, the, the, the effects on Sally are brilliant. The, the change effects isn't. You can tell, again, budget. Yeah. When they have a close-up on in Demons, when her teeth are coming out, yeah. it her lips are moving a bit better. Yeah. But on this one, even though it's less money, they do a full face, and you can just, it's just, it doesn't work. Yeah. It's not her head. 
And then it and, does the, a and shock. when you when you see Sally with the other demons, you yeah. can really tell. Yeah, yeah. Like because they, obviously they use her a lot. She comes. She's in it throughout. She's the first demon effectively infected. When you're comparing them, you go, "Well, that guy's just green." Yeah. Like there's nothing else other than he's and green. And it's not even like green on his neck. It's no, it's just, it's just literally green. Yeah. It's like it's like Dawn of the Dead where yeah. they're just like they're just grey, you know, with a little bit of gore yeah. or but they're pretty much just grey and that's it, they're just green. And like Sally has like veins on her arms. Mm. It's it you know off. Yeah, in the face. And the 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 scene when they're all fighting. Yeah, they've got, she's got the big bulging eyes. Yeah, there's, and there's, there's like a, a muscle man who's been who's turned into a demon and it's literally just he looks like the Hulk, but his yeah. rest of his body's exactly the same as it would have been. So mm. anyway, so her her effects are quite good and the attack she does in the apartment I think is quite a lot of slashing yeah. Yeah. and she's doing what the film says yeah. is transferring the demon using her nails mm. but then Daniel mm-hmm. how does she try to infect the rest of the apartment block <laughs> does she use her nails no does she knock on the door and say would you like to be a demon <laughs> pretty much she basically pukes blood up yeah on people. Which is acid blood. She does, yeah. That's a new demon power that yeah, was in the first one. Yeah. I do like the effect. Bit bit xenomorphy. It does melt bits of the building. Mm-hmm. Destroy um, destroys the electronics, yeah, the, the electrical all the system. Lights go out and stuff, so all locked the, in the building. Yes, yeah, so they can't get out, which is a good touch as well. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Very kind bit, of bit dreadier. die hard. Yeah. Bit die hard. But she basically stands there what seems like forever, yeah. Screaming while she's emanating thick blonde, viscous coloured acid blood acid blood which yeah. seemed to get more more blonde as it drips through yeah, the apartment block it starts off quite a yeah. deep colour I think my favourite moment of that is when it comes to the lady with the dog the yes. lo- lonely lady I would call her a lonely lady but I don't think she's particularly lonely she seems happy enough but she has a golden retriever who she just lets roam the halls apparently as well. She just it's lets, massive, it, though, isn't lets it? it out for a walk. There's, there's, just there's hopes it come back. She looks. There's there's like a scratch at the door. Mm. So the dog has knocked to yeah. come in. Yeah. And then she goes to the. Well, it's a jump scare, isn't it? You, get, yeah. you think maybe Sally's at yeah. the door and going to attack. Well, it's so. Oh, it's, it's just a massive dog. Yeah, and she looks at the people, which is adult size. Yeah. And the dog's there. <laughs> And how does the dog understand that's a yeah. people as well? And then, and then when she opens the door, he's like down there. So yeah. what, what's going on? Anyway, anyway, the, the the demon blood drops drops in. The dog doesn't like it. He's barking at it. He's snarling at it. Um, but then the woman comes in and says, "You didn't lick that, did you?" What's the dog called Devil. I don't think that was. I don't think that's subtle enough. Foreshadowing. Yeah. <laughs> and he becomes a demon, and he's he's growing like a demon out of his mouth, almost kind of again, bit bit like a xenomorph. There's yeah. like an extra mouth coming out Green of his eyes mouth, and stuff. Green eyes popping out, uh, and then he just eats the woman. Yes, yeah. that's, that's the end of her story. And that's the last you see of the dog. <laughs> that's it. Because it's probably quite an expensive special yeah. effect. Yeah, and then you get the the little kid gets stripped on as well. And yeah. Then, and then he becomes a little demon, and then he goes to attack Hannah, the pregnant lady who's married to George who's the lead male guy um, and I think his makeup's comical I don't think it was that bad actually I, I think know. what comes out of him is comical because <sighs> I th- I like a good kind of creepy kid in a movie and yeah. I like when they use that and I, I always think it's interesting but with with this I think you said it best that it was very influenced by gremlins it, yeah completely it's completely a gremlin or a ghoul yeah. or something like that a, a bit like with Kathy in the first one he falls over something starts tearing in outside of his body it's inside his body tears itself out and it doesn't look anywhere near as good as the demon in the first one that tears itself out of Hannah's uh, Kathy's back it looks like something out of ghoulies or gremlins or hobgoblins or any of those t- type you know cre- it's, it's critters you critters can clearly, you can clearly see it's sample puppet yeah and it, it's not scary no. like the kid was scarier than this puppet yeah, yeah. it looks cute and you, and it's got little wings it's got horns and it does these little and it, cute noises and again it's not it's not a bad design I don't think it's a bad design it's just in the wrong movie yeah it doesn't fit this th- tonally or thematically it just doesn't it just looks like something like out of I don't know just some fantasy film you know a kid's fantasy film where it's like like something like Labyrinth it looks mm-hmm. like it's something out of that basically when it's jumping about it's very yeah. similar to that isn't and it? it's not funny no. it's just stupid and weird um, it's yeah. kind of out of context with the rest of the film yeah and then it gets 
fuck and then it gets absolutely destroyed by an umbrella it's like impaled by an umbrella and i just remember people just laughing in the cinema like what the fuck yeah. was this about because you may be wondering what george is mm. george is stuck in a lift with shit with yes. the prostitute the prostitute lady yeah because obviously the power's gone out yeah. so george is the uh, prostitute lady even though she's a prostitute and Bobby won a gag, she doesn't like being in the lift. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't like tight spaces. <laughs> I could go all day. <laughs> That's one. She's okay. Me. She's okay with people going down there. Yeah, I've got people going down, and you know, she doesn't like tight spaces. She charges extra for that. <laughs> anyway, so like. George is shouting at her to mm. chill out and you know the nice security guard who was ripping the first yeah, yeah. one tries letting her out but he gets his face ripped, ripped off which is a good good effect mm. um, and then the prostitute gets her hair pulled and like normal yeah and yeah but I don't think she yeah <laughs> <laughs> Dennis stay on track <laughs> he's, he's trying to bait you but don't do it um, so she gets her hair pulled mm-hmm. at this point um, George is fed up Breaks out of the lift and starts climbing up. And it's a really... He looks down and she's there holding a leg. Bit of skirt up saying, Don't leave me. Don't leave me. And he goes to the lift up and he's... Rah! She's turned into a demon. The demon pulled her hair. Yes. Didn't drip on her. Didn't scratch her. Yeah, it didn't. Did didn't he? do anything. Just scrapped pulled her hair. Her. Scrapped her. So you'd be all right. I'd be fine, yeah. yeah. No one can grab my... Well, maybe well, maybe my shoulder or back hair. Back maybe. hair, yeah. yeah. Scroll them. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. That's... Um, he climb and it's a good, quite a good scene climbing up the kind of um, inside of the lift shaft. A- uh, the alien, it's not an alien. It's a, the, who knows? Who fucking point. knows what it is? <laughs> the demons coming up the other side. Might as well be. But it's it's a really good when when she falls down. It's it's one thing the movie does quite well is the bodies are weighted pretty well. So yeah. it, even if it's a D- dummy, the dummy, the yeah. dummies look yeah. weighted correctly, like it would be a person. But I, I I also think watching it today that I just find the demons the demons in the first one are scared. They scared yeah. me. And the first demon and probably Sally is on that, but all the rest of them are just comical. Yeah. It, it starts With the looking, glowy eyes and stuff. It starts looking like kind of the cheaper zombie movies that it, the, the Italians made, yeah. like Nightmare City and things like that, where it's like, okay, they're not great. They're fine, but they're not great. Um, <laughs> there's, a, there's a scene, the shot with the cameras. And the thing is, this, this block is massive, hmm. yet you only see five staircases. Yeah. So I don't... I I, the, the, I don't get that either. Oh, I want I want to talk about I want to talk about this firegate. Uh, yeah. So so for, first of all about the flats, I th- I think it uh, like a, a tower block is a good setting or a, mm. kind of a building is a good setting for a film like like you said dread or the raid uh, or like game of death where you go up the pagoda and and. I think what you need in that, and even like attack the block as well, like yeah. it's stuff like that, you need it to kind of. It needs to be a bit like a video game. As you rise up in the in the the tower block, it needs to get more and more difficult, and you need to kind of reach that kind of boss level, and that is the finale. And you don't. And I think I need that in anything where it's like set within a tower block. I need that progression. Um, I need that rising of the threat level. But you don't get that in this because one, you don't know where anybody is. You can't locate yourself. Yeah. Like you said, you don't know where you are. Outside, you don't know where you are. Inside, you don't know where you are. I swear that these characters would have crossed paths by now. Yeah. Like they, they seem alone but you they must have at least bumped into each other or you know something must have happened that well did the family get down to the garage don't yeah they? how I did that how does that happen yeah yeah well, a few of them get down don't they yes. run out moving on car park all the gym guys all i want to say to you is just chill about this okay <laughs> it's i know so it annoying. upsets you it's so annoying okay so they all all the gym bunnies get down into the car park they're like right we're gonna get out the electronic, all the electronics are not working, so the door won't go up. Uh, all the demons are coming in, and they decide to barricade it. And they're like, "Grab some weapons, grab." And then all of a sudden, they decide to start driving their cars around, even though they can't go anywhere. Just fucking driving them around, going mental, driving them around. And then all the barricades they've just created, they start burning them. And I'm like, "You're in an enclosed space. It's a car, it's concrete. There's not much fresh air getting in. 
You're going to use up all your oxygen and you're going to die of smoke inhalation. That is what's going to happen. Especially in the 80s when most of in-car seats yeah. were just full of really bad toxins. Yeah. And if that was if that was 1980s London, you know that would be another grefnel. That would definitely be a grefnel. Yeah. You you know for a fact that the fucking Tories would not have done, not have made a proper building. Yeah, it's a, it's a weird thing because as soon as, as soon as the first wave of zombies, demons, aliens attack... Yeah. They put it out. Yeah, exactly. They, like, they're like, grab some, grab some weapons. And yeah, and this is where they, their their trampolines come in, where yeah. they're just bounding over. They just <laughs> bound over the barricade anyway. So yeah, just, and, so absolutely pointless. But, I, but why, I, why build a barricade only to set it on fire? It doesn't make any sense. Well, it is. No, it doesn't. It's, it's like building a barricade. Oh, right, let's just smash it now. It just fire looks good on film. Yeah, I, I'm sure it does. That's but, it. That's, yeah, but. but and then they start driving the cars around again, even though they can't go anywhere. That guy, he, he does a really good thing with his car. He kills two of the demons. Yeah, not, as well. yeah right. Next time you see him, he's, he's doing a flip over another car. How yeah. has that happened? Yeah. Like, surely you're like, I know you've not got much room to. You can't drive. I would guarantee you couldn't do that. No, I couldn't. But I, I, I have more sense not to try driving yeah. in a small car park that's already on fire <laughs> with demons running everywhere. And then, and then later, they're all like, they, they, they've put out the fires. The demons are coming through again to attack them. They're like, grab weapons, do this, do that. Um, and they're all like, okay. And Asia Argento's family's down there now. Um, and the, half of them are hiding away in the cars. And you mentioned that they're like, like this this uh, group of three girls are just hiding there. They've got all the windows closed and everything. Left the, left, leave the sunroof open though. So the <laughs> demons go in and just pull them out. And then, yeah. and then they're, they're smashing through all these windows. And then Asia Argento ends up in a car on her own. And they're like, just stay in the car. The dad's whacking the demons away with this big metal pole. And he's like, it's proper heroic. You know, it's a good little kind of fight scene. The the gym trainer and the pimp from the last one gets his bollocks pulled off. He does. I mean, you you don't see him. Get the, the, the it's basically yeah, it's it, heavily implied. His, his, his um, voice goes up a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he goes up. Um, but yeah so that happens and then Asia Argento and and then like all of these demons are smashing through the windows of all these cars and and everything this fires are starting up again (laughs) and you're like fucking hell what the like you couldn't have picked a worse place to barricade yourself like if you're in a zombie like there's no film there's no zombie film that ends up in a car park is there because no fucker would be stupid enough to go down there and go yeah this is the safest place for me you can't go anywhere (laughs) this is this is the safest place for me you know what i'm gonna do set it on fire and i'm gonna hide in my car and leave the sunroof yeah. open. So Asia Argento gets stuck in this car, and for some reason, all the demons go, oh, I can't can't break into the car, even though we've broken into every other car that has an adult in it. Oh, we'll just we'll just uh, snarl at her. And then all of a sudden they just run away. Yeah. No reason. They run away. There's no reason at all. Um and while, while this is going on, George has got a cunning plan. <laughs> it is so cunning you could have put a tail on it and call it a fox. Now all the way through this this movie, um, George has been slowly losing his clothing. Underneath that suit he, he wore, wore, he's he's quite a muffin. He's got pecs on top of pecs. Mm-hmm. He's got a 27 pack. Mm-hmm. And he grabs his, his wife and says, I've got an idea what we're going to do. We're going to abseil down the building. <laughs> to which somebody behind us and somebody went, yep, I'd do that. <laughs> like, that works. But and then he's he's covered in all this rope. He's got all these buckles and things. Yeah. He's got an ice axe. Yeah, again, totally out of the blue. Yeah. Like, that, like the gas powered grappling harpoon. And he he stands is 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 like ready to pop, literally ready to pop. Wife at the top of these stairs and says, "Wait here, they're gonna come. They're not gonna come. Nope, they're not even no. halfway up the stairs." No. He goes down the stairs and starts hacking at a vent to get. Mm. The gas Get pipe. gas pipe, and yeah. Then they start running up because he's announced he's there. Mm. And he, he pulls the... But he's doing all this with all his gear on. Mm. Now, I don't know. Maybe he should have said to his wife, you stand here, I'm just going to leave all his gear with you, mm. but take the axe. Because all this might slow me down running from the hordes mm. of alien, demon, hybrid type things which are running upstairs. No. Takes it all with him. And then you get the kind of... He's released the gas... He's got his Zippo lighter, which changes three times in the movie. He has a normal lighter, he has a, a, a gold Zippo lighter, and right then he has a, a silver one. Well, aren't you the eagle-eyed viewer? I'm fucking geeky. Um, he's there flicking it. 
it's not working. What's he going to do? It's not going to happen. And then he throws it when it lights and an explosion engulfs the, the demons, but it's gas. So it would probably still burn. You'd, you'd get that pop, hmm. but then... But then it would be a continuous yeah, stream and then it'd be of like, flame. They'd be like, shit, what am I going to do yeah. now? Can't walk past this stream of flame. No. So that would have been so that would have been more effective yeah, really if it, if it had worked properly. Massive flamethrower, it'd be great if it worked realistically. Yeah. So at this point, they've, they've found two people, a man and a woman, who was at the original party with with Sally. Um, they've been hiding all the way through this. They've had n- stressing. They've had no contact with any demon. They've been they've been in a closet, <laughs> bit like Dan. <laughs> so. <laughs> so um, they come across them and they take them to the... They're walking up, up these steps. And um, as always, the hair gets all messed up so you know it's going to be a demon. Right. And the lad turns around and he's turned into a demon. How? How has that happened? Is it now in the air? Are they breathing demon shit I in? I think, I think in the finale they just go, right, forget all the stuff we've established. Forget all the stuff we've said in dialogue, like how the demons work and what the rules are. <laughs> Fuck it. <sighs> Fuck it, we need we need a threat. Quick! Oh, and another yeah. one. Jump scare and another one. Quick, turn them into a demon. It is it is very bizarre. And again, they have not had any contact. No, with They've been locked in that cupboard, you know, since Sally's attack. They didn't get touched by Sally. You know, they were just they're just safe, waiting for it. And then they, the second they get out, it's just all of a sudden, so, it's in so, the so air. So they get get to the roof. George and his in his wisdom gets all the wires and mm. cords. I don't know what they call yeah. these things. And the woman, the other girl they found, she turns into a demon. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, she gets thrown off the Doesn't building. Matter. It's Doesn't quite matter. a good fallout. I quite like that one as well. Yeah, that's true. So George's plan is to get his heavily pregnant, anytime going to fire out a child, yeah. on his back to abseil down a massive building. <laughs> so they do it. You can obviously see it's a stump man, now heavily pregnant, on the yeah. back of George. Yeah. But we forgot about Sally. She survived the explosion. Yeah. Also, I don't think that explosion was big enough to kill all those demons because it barely touched them. No. Like barely touched anyone. My farts make more of a bang than that. <laughs> so he's coming, he's coming down, um, get to the bottom, and why does Sally go down forwards? Because it looks fucking cool. That's why. <laughs> and She's then, like, Shh. Yeah, and then she flips around. Yeah. And she flips around, George... Stabs, yeah. stabs her, pins her up. Yeah. And now, you know, his wife's going, ooh. Yeah. Oh, I'm pregnant. Oh, I'm going to have that baby. Yeah. And <laughs> to be fair, like, she doesn't look very pregnant. Like, she doesn't look heavily pregnant in well, the entire it's the, film. Maybe it's the stress of the um, of the demons that's brought her on. Yeah, but it just, like, she, she said, I think she says she's, she's ready to pop. But she yeah. doesn't, like... You know, I, you see, like, a pregnant stomach. You know someone is pregnant. Yeah. But she doesn't really look like... She's a small baby. Not a shower. Not a shower. No, well, I'm not either. There you go. I'm a grower. <laughs> so they go, for some bizarre reason, they wander into a, a, your particular favourite, um, into a, a studio. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> they, they walk into a studio and it's it's almost like a J.R. Tolkien film. They, they spend 10 minutes describing the fucking TV studio. They go, there's a bank of seats, there's monitors... There's a camera. There's weird setting and props. This must be a TV studio. Honestly, that's probably about the speed of that's. I probably I'm probably doing that way too fast. Actually, the the dialogue is yeah. much slower. Well, I was watching your face when you're doing it. Like, I was just like, come on, get the fuck on with it. I know you're in a fucking TV studio because you walk in, you see the bank, and you see the t- you see a massive camera. You go right TV studio. Like any fucking idiot knows that. And it must be like, it looks like we've only got 89 minutes. We need to fill another minute <laughs> yeah, quick. Yeah. How do we do that? Well, he, uh, so she, so she, she starts giving birth. He lies her down and does fuck all to help her. Just, he just gently just, kind of taps her head. taps her head. Kind of does a bit of that. Just like yeah. just gently stroking the, uh, with his back hand. Um, massive heavy metal on again. <laughs> Very appropriate yeah, for, a, for, a, for a birth. And then it cuts and there's a baby bomb. Oh, beautiful moment. Yeah. Gorgeous. Wrap it in a towel and it's a boy and it's, yeah. oh, it's wonderful. Yeah. And it's a normal child, doesn't have any teeth, it's just, nah. a, just a baby. And um, mum says, George, 
go and get him some more blankets. He's very cold. So George starts walking away oh. and he does that. Sally returns. Yeah. But she's blind. And it, that happens in like seconds as well because she's got red eyes initially. Yeah. And then she just goes blind, falls over and dies. Yeah. Okay. And then the TV's on and you can see her because there's a, there's a scene when she was running towards them on the roof and, and it's replayed on the TV screens. Uh, and because, you know, if somehow George knows that they came through the TV, which isn't explained, he destroys, decides to destroy all the TV screens that have her running towards him. Um, and then they walk outside and the film just and ends. inappropriate snog. God, they have really fucking go to town yeah, in, in each a- other's mouths. Just like... And he never does get that extra blanket for the baby. <laughs> Don't give a shit. Nah. Bad dad. Able, yeah. Bad dad. Well, I, before, Don't worry, he's, he's going to teach you to abseil. It'll be fine. <laughs> Just before we go through the... It, this film does treat children really bad because they, they leave. Little Argento is still stuck in the garage. <laughs> it's on fire. It's on fire. She's locked in a car. She's dead. She's dead. They, and, they and, turned a little kid into a demon and a little demon c- cried out. Not not the weirdest thing that Dario Argento has, has, has made his daughter do on screen. <laughs> no, a few years later, you know. And, and then they let her, you know, he couldn't even bother to get a blanket for his, for his baby. Nah, prick. Awful dad. Awful. Awful, awful, awful dad. But, and, the, and the other kid who was in it, he yeah. just fucking exploded because that, sh- that shit gremlin came out of him. But by this time... Um, George has no top on. No, definitely. And in the cinema, people were laughing because it's like <laughs> it's just get lots of Jesus, man. But uh, to be fair, like and grease on him, and yeah. stuff. He's, you know, to be I'm fair, I'm just jealous because he was a doozy. To be fair, there's you know, everybody gets overtly sexualized, men and women. You know, it's just it's just the way it is, unfortunately, one way or another. But he's 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 a physics geek. Who can climb buildings and smash? It's not things. a physics geek because she has to teach him physics. Well, he's trying to be a physics geek. <laughs> she knows more physics than he does. She anyway. should. She should be the breadwinner. She's clearly better. Well, she's be- I think she's better in all ways. Yeah. And she's a better actor, and she's prettier, and she's had a baby. She has. She has. Right, Dennis. Okay. So we've talked about both films El- yeah. on in length. Um, so we must compare yes, them now. Yes, please. Um, so let's start off with. <laughs> All of the categories that we usually decide on. Yeah. So, first of all, it's writing, then acting, then music, cinematography, and finally direction. So, uh, which movie do you think was better written? Shall I toss a coin? I mean, I mean the first be- one. I mean, there's, there's, they're so similar. Yeah. And there's not that many changes. I think the first one's that got the pace on its side. It's got the pace. It's got the holds attention. Yeah. Uh, the feels like. A t- kind of a, t- a ticking time bomb yeah, situation. Do you get? It's just getting there worse is and worse and stuff. And yeah. even though the characters aren't developed, I do feel you know the characters better in the first one than you do. Yeah. In the I, other. I also feel you feel for them a bit more yeah. in the situation because the situation is just pure chaos. Yeah, um, and the only person I feel sorry for really in Demons Two is Little Argento. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, anyway, so yeah. So um, I'd, I'd go with number one. I also think the end. I think I think the ending for Demons Two is is weak. Yes, I think it just kind of Suck just your face and walk it's, off. It's it's anticlimactic because like why bring Sally back if she was just about to fucking die anyway? Yeah, but like, Italians don't know how to end movies. Yeah, maybe that's it. But but de- I think Demons ends quite well. It has the jump yeah, scare yeah, and then it's kind of yeah. like slightly open ended. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, because I, 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 you know it's kind of a surprise ending, so that's very eighties horror for me. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, so I'd, I'd say uh, Demons won as well. The original Demons uh, acting. It's not easy, is it? Not really. <laughs> I'm gonna go for one because the acting is so over the top. Yes. Um, but again, like I said, the freak outs are really good. Yeah, the freak outs good, but I think the situation and the the way it's presented demands that kind of yeah, acting. Yeah. And again, I don't think the second one again has that no. situation to demand that heightened reality and that heightened acting. And um, is it, in the in the first one, the characters do play off each other. Yeah. Which they don't at all. Yeah. You just get people shouting at each other. Yeah. I feel like I feel like the second one's a bit more like a slow burn, and it tries it tries to build tension in a different way, 
but it doesn't come off. And it, it doesn't make any sense. Why try making the same movie? Because it, it's very similar, yeah. but then it's almost the approach is different. Yeah. And I think that was like, okay, I want to do something slightly different, or I want to do, but it doesn't work in the same way. It feels like they're trying to build tension in the way a slasher film would, but then the whole premise of the demons that they've set up in the first one is just purely zombie, chaotic, yeah. you know. So why do that? And then try and make it a slasher type thing or a, yeah. a Jarlo type See, thing. It would, it would kind of make sense if George and his wife had to work the way past all the demons to get to the roof to get down. Yeah. And each section's. Exactly, yeah. And so you, you, you have that, you know, at the top, yeah. Sally and whatever. Yeah. Or, 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 or progr- as they progress, there's more and more yeah, of the demons, yeah. or the slightly different variations of the demons. Like, or there's, there's other environmental things in the yes. way to make yeah, it. Yeah, there's difficult. other problems, there's yeah. other difficulties. Like, maybe a floor is just all the doors are open yeah, yeah. and they have to somehow get through or something like that. That, that I think that would build tension and be would a slightly been better. better movie. Yeah. But, but I, I'm going to go for the number one again. Yeah, I think, I'm, think, I think the same. I think, I think that's, again, it's the. It's it's the ensemble. Yeah. I I think I think these actors may have been stronger together, but unfortunately, because of the budgetary constraints, they're all separate yeah. and they have, you know, weaknesses. Some of the actors I don't think are as good or as strong alone. And I think there's a lot of time where the actors are with either one actor or alone or with a demon. Yeah. And I think that's it. Uh, I don't think you get a lot of that kind of camaraderie in the first one that you get uh, and the bonding and the and the, the sense that they've been through something I would agree with you you yeah. know the sense they've been yeah. through an ordeal you don't you don't necessarily get no, that I know we joked about it but there's no kind of emotional kind of thing in, in the second one that you do have you know people yeah. friends die you know both of them lose yeah. their best mates in it so, yeah. well. so you do have a little bit more you're a bit more invested yeah because they're all so fragmented in the second one you yeah. don't really no it is almost like everyone's fault. And you, and you don't spend enough time with them. Like no. You kind of spend time with everybody the same amount of time yeah. until they get killed off, obviously, or turned into it's, it's very demon. That Channel 4 program, The Circle, where they're on those little boxes. Yeah. Stuff, you never get to spend enough to really get to know. And it's similar to that. Mm. You know, and I agree with you. They, they would have passed each other. You would have had conversations. You would have planned stuff together. Yeah. You know, and I think there's... I think there's the situation like there was always some some other obstacle like it was like oh now what now what now what but with this one it's almost like oh i'm creating the obstacle yeah i'm running down to the to to alert the demons i'm doing this i've made that noise i've gone into that room you know it's it's kind of more just fucking stupidity yeah. as opposed to like survival mm. um it's just like oh that door's open i think i'll go try that cake you know shit like that and you're like yeah. what the fuck are you doing yeah like, get out of the room, bitch. Don't go up the stairs, bitch. Yeah, that sort of thing. If you've been attacked by loads of weird monsters, you don't go, ooh, look at yeah. that slice. Yeah. Ooh, let me just walk into this room and turn the lights yeah. on. Ooh, is it jam? Is it yeah. sponge or fruit? I don't yeah. like fruit. <laughs> Sorry, go on. <laughs> so, yeah, I agree. Again, first demons again. Music. Oh, first one. Yeah. Hands down. I think I think you get, you get more variety. Yeah. You also get... I think better songs and the demons have a theme. Yes, yeah, uh, yeah. The goblin, the stuff from uh, C- Simeonetti yeah. um, is is a great theme. But then you also get all yeah. the soundtrack is great. Like every set piece is laden with cracking yeah. music. Mm. I don't think again the movie with the Smiths work. No, it wasn't. I mean, it was for the party scene. It was yeah, fine. But even when they were doing all the bits, they're just they're all middle of the road. It, and even, to be honest, I don't think they were playing the Smiths when they were dancing either. It no. seems like it's not the kind of dancing you would do to the Smiths. Oh, and yeah. I, I, Jensen likes heavy metal in his, in yeah. his movies, you know. It works. Like, so, it really it, work. it, it, yeah, horror and and metal going to go hand in hand. But yeah. I, I do like I do like the theme. I like the, mm. the, the, the kind of goblin-esque um, synths mm. and heavy bass and stuff yeah. like that. I think it, it suits the movie. Yeah. Uh, cinematography. First one. Yeah, I think the gels and the colours really yeah. work. You can, you can tell that Argento in the first one really. I don't know whether he directed it. I, no one really knows all in nah. there, but you can see his, if, if, his I mean, style. Yeah, there's, there's there's a lot of influence there, yeah. and like again, he was you know they're all part of the same kind of core group. Yeah. Uh, these kind of Italian filmmakers, they've all worked with each other or done favors for each other yeah, well, and things I, like I, that. I kind of read today that when they were talking about doing a third one, mm. the reason why it didn't happen was because the director didn't want to work with Argento again because he right. had that much control. Right. And I he think wanted a bit you, more freedom. I, yeah, I think if you look at the first one, you can almost see 
no, I want that light there. Yeah. I want this. And this needs to be like yeah. this. This needs to be like um, this. Because it was like one of his first films, wasn't it? Yeah, and also yeah. he's pissed off that it's uh, his name, Agenda's name, is all than o- his. Yeah, it's all over it. So yeah. he presents or, yeah. or whatever. Or in some of them, it's not even presented, it's just his name. Above yeah. It, so. It's a big selling point, though. Like, he's a yeah, big, big yeah. name in Italian horror, probably yeah. the biggest name in but Italian I, I horror. Think, I, think, I think the settings, like I was saying, the scene when she's running away from the first from Rosemary and the, the, the curtains. Yeah. They do curtains really well. Yeah, true. Um, yeah. And I just think it's lit better. Yeah. I think the shots are framed better as well. Yeah. Like the, you know, you've got her kind of leaning down and, and growling and, yeah, and yeah. the hands going up. And... Like you, you do have like some good scenes and all like the, yeah. they do do the, the, sh- the shadow darkness type yeah. stuff. I think I th- like, even though, even though Demons 2 is a lesser film, I think it's only because again, We've watched them directly mm. at one after each other. I wouldn't have noticed the budgetary constraints if I hadn't have watched the yeah. first one directly after. And I think Demons Two is fine. I think it's, yeah, I, don't, I like them. Both. It's, you know, I like I, I very much like them both, uh, and they're pretty much the same fucking film anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think if you like Demons and you've seen that enough, you can watch Demons Two and yeah. still get a kick out of that. Yeah. You know, it's not it's not a bad film in comparison. No, it's just no. not. As quite as good. No, it's not, it's, it's not as polished. No, it's a bet. It's and you and again, it's a money t- and it's a money, a time. Eight and, months after the film, four yeah. weeks, uh, eight rushed, weeks filming, rushed in, less budget. Yeah, you know, it's, it's never going to be the same as that. Yeah. Uh, well, we've said we. I think it's almost like a clear across the board for this one. I think. Okay. It's direct direction as well. I mean, it's the same director in both. <sighs> you know what. I would say uh, in the middle of this one because I'm yeah. not sure he directed both of the movies mm. himself. He, there's so much agenda in the first one. Mm. There is no way that he hasn't done direction into it. Whether yeah. he did second unit, yeah. whether he kind of went on and did... I, I don't know. It's just... It's all... It, 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 you know, it is an agenda movie. Yeah. The first one, definitely. The second one, not as much. But which which is the, it, which do you think has the better direction? If first you were, one. Yeah, thought yeah, so. Yeah. I agree, I agree. No matter who directed it, the yeah. direction is superior in, yes. in the first one. It is, yeah. Um, so yeah, across the board, Demons 1 takes the win, but still I, I would recommend seeing yeah. Demons 2. If best you, George. Best George? First George. Yes. Yeah, He's I think got first, a sword. It's got, you can't beat yeah. motorcycle and samurai sword. Best like, pin. Best pimp. I mean, there's only there's only yeah, one pimp. I can't remember. <laughs> best pimp. Best. I can't remember the guy's name. The director. The actor's name. Uh, is it Bobby Rhodes? There Bobby, we go. Bobby Rhodes. Bobby yeah. Rhodes. Yeah. Best. Best. Uh, I think he was better as the pimp. I do honest. as well. I think he was a bit more over the top and a bit more flamboyant. Yeah. It was uh, more like an exploitation yeah. movie, weren't it? In the second one. And he died. Yeah. He dies a bit better in the first yeah, one. I think. Yeah. I like the I like the way he dresses as well. A bit more memorable. He's a memorable, more memorable yeah, character. Yeah, yeah. I think for him, he's a cool actor. Cool. He's got a great look about him as well. I um, also think Demons One works better because it's, you know, when we're talking about um, descent, mm. you have that kind of claustrophobic and that feel. Yeah. I think it works better with that. Yeah. And I think the building's just too big. Yeah. Like, well, like we said, like, you don't know where you are in the building. No. You never know. Like, when I watch, like, Alien, you know, like, Alien 3, when they're trying to trap the alien. Yeah. Uh, and they're in that kind of tunnel system. And uh, they're trying to get the hot lead on it. Like, I have no, like, I have no idea where the guys are. I have no idea where the alien is. I have no idea where the lead bath is. So I don't feel any tension. No. And it's the same in, it's the same in this. I don't know where anybody is. I don't know where the demons are, where they're located. But in the first one, I kind of get, I kind of know where they are and I think to, it, a, to a degree. Yeah, and it's filmed on location. It's filmed in that cinema. Yeah, exactly. Where we know for a fact the second one was filmed all over the place. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and I think the fact it was filmed on location, you've only got that to work with. Hmm. Which That's I think made it... So you see the same... When they're running backwards and forwards, you're seeing the same things. Yeah. So exactly. it has that kind of... You, you know they're in the same place where yeah. in the... They turn the that same one. corner, they yeah, those you stairs. Have, you have not... And even even the floors look different in some of them. Like where, yeah. uh, where little Argenta lives mm. looks different to where George lives. Yeah. So. I think you can tell it's a set as well. Those, yes. those rooms yeah, yeah. are all they're clearly a yeah, set. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that, I think that's part of the issue as well. Um, again, you would think they would all look the same and they would all be designed the same mm. like most flats are. But yeah, absolutely not. Um, yeah, but that's uh, that's it. But that was that was fun. Yeah, 
I enjoyed that. I had a great evening. I mean, a lot of fun. I've now got to go and try to find the Demons 3 comic. Yes, you said there's a there yeah. was Arrow released their previous DVDs and they included a Demons 3 comic. About yeah, it. so Demons are part one, Demons 2 are part two. It's um, written by the director, you say? It's written by the director. It's got the um, influences by the special effects guy as well. Hmm. He did, did bits of it and it, it was commissioned. But it's got, apparently it's got some, I don't really know the name, we've got some good names attached to yeah, it yeah. as well. Mainly Italian comic. Yeah, yeah of course. Comic people. Mm. Um, but I've seen some of the artwork today and it, it looks great. And nice. I want to find it. But the only one I found is so expensive. My wife would kill me. Um, then then I think you should let her. I think you should let her. Yeah, I'm, I will find it. I'm I, sure. I have people. I will find them. I have people. I'm sure you will. I'm sure you'll find a way. Right? Are you still on the still off the social medias? Yeah, I don't think I'm ever going back. Really, don't blame you. It's, Absolutely, it's, do not it's blame a you. Toxic place of wankers. I keep... <laughs> no, uh, oh, not really not, cool. not not the not our listeners. They're no, great. No, um, I, 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 there's some, I there were some wonderful people. On, no, I I, on I keep stuff. I keep my social media fairly small. Yeah, I it, I think it works better for you because it's not personal stuff. I don't. Yeah, I t- I tend to stick to certain I, I'm I'm much more on Twitter nowadays I think yeah, than anywhere yeah. else. Um you know, but I do I do the general stuff just to kind of promote the podcast and yeah. and just let people know that I'm alive mostly. <laughs> like when my family don't hear from me, they're like, yeah. Well he well he posted his Facebook, so he must be alive. Yeah. Um but yes, um I'm on Facebook so it's at Secret Bores. Uh Twitter it's at Dan underscore Bores. Uh, Instagram at Spider Dan Secret Balls. And don't forget to use the hashtag prepare for prattle uh, when you interact with us. And for everything else you need to know about the podcast, swing over to spiderdanandthesecretballs.com on the World Wide Web to email me, read reviews, and learn how you can support the podcast. Speaking of supporting the podcast, I'd like to thank my patrons on Patreon. I am Jack's Musings, Paul Meller, Max Byrne, Tony Farina, and Scott Hodgson uh, for their continuing donations. It is very much appreciated and helps Prattle World keep on turning so thank you very much and thank you dennis for joining me once again it's always an absolute pleasure and our next one is something i'm sure you're looking forward to and it's going to be stephen king our top five stephen king adaptations with (sighs) mr paul meller himself one of our patreon uh and i know you're not really a fan of stephen king so fucking hate him (laughs) Well, it's going to be an interesting discussion because I know Paul likes him clearly because yeah. he's chosen I'm the topic. I'm choosing five movies. I really am. <laughs> I'm, just... ca- I'm kind of middle of the road. I, I, yeah. I can't. I haven't read any of the novels or novellas. What did I so... say today? Is that um, you can stick your Stephen King, watch Demons. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Stick your Stephen King. Watch Demons. But we're still going to do it, and we're still going to find out what our top five. Don't know what Dennis is going to pick, but I think I'm pretty settled on mine. If nothing else, it's going to be funny. (laughs) I can't wait to hear the the, uh, juxtaposition between you and Paul, and me just being like, eh. It's already been. It's already. We've already been on. on oh, it will conti- I'm sure it will continue. Yeah, it's sure like, it will continue. You'll put on shit. We'll go. We'll go. What, what a great choice, Paul. And you'll go, fucking crap. Shit. What a doesn't fucking stand sh- up. <laughs> it doesn't stand up. That is crap. <laughs> Sometimes dead is better. Yeah. <laughs> must have someone doing um, uh, main. It, it's accent. not. A, it's not a Stephen King adaptation if, unless one of the actors tries to do a main accent. Oh, you're going to be on the graveyard shift. <laughs> Oh, that's great. <laughs> oh, okay. Which is not one of my movies, by the way. No. Um, Might no, be one of mine. I don't know yet. I am sure, because I'm trying to stay away from the popular things. Yeah, me I'm, too. I'm not even a Shawshank fan. No. I don't, I think... I might, well, I've never seen Green Mile, so I might, I might try Green Mile. And the same with that, I think, I think it's more because the performance is good. Yeah. I don't think the story is very good. No. Um, it's, it seems to be that his more popular films are the ones that are not that scary yeah. or not that meant or the more fantasy or thriller um you know it, which i find quite interesting but people have their favorites you know yeah. and again i'm gonna i'm gonna try and look I, for the ones that are kind of i've never I, less I'm heralded just, just not a fan yeah i don't think his books adapt very well well we're gonna certainly find out more but we'll leave that for another oh, podcast god i'm looking forward to it <laughs> thanks paul you've had you've had your demons you've had your fill of demons yeah. so so now you've you had other to... things to choose didn't you <laughs> well we let we let fate choose we let fate yeah, choose we flipped a coin so so you've got to you know question the lords of f- or fate ordering no, chaos just next time i see paul i'm gonna kick him in the balls 
I'm sure I'll, I'll pick something next time. There'll be something next yeah, time. It'll be fun. You, you'll have you've got enough. You've got enough I know, I, stuff. You know, listen, mate. I enjoy anything. I enjoy a debate. It'd be nice. It's good to hear. It's so. good to hear different opinions as yeah. well. So, and this the, before I go, this is going to be the only one where I'm, I'm like properly hate stuff. Because <laughs> usually I always find good in yeah. crap, but I properly especially don't like these that. films. Especially yeah, I these just films. Don't like them. But no. All right, that's it from us, guys. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed this one. Thank uh, you so much for having me, Daniel. Anytime, anytime. Thank you for coming around uh, on this kind of. I guess we're slightly out of lockdown now, so it's we're we're moving yeah. forward. So that's nice. I can actually meet in person with people. I don't have to bother with bloody Zoom and stuff. Uh, hopefully, nobody wants crossed. to meet you, well then. No, nah, that's why I live alone. <laughs> and on that bombshell, I'm going <laughs> bye <Bye-bye>. bye. <Bye-bye. laughs>